Hello friends. Welcome to the Muse fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto had Minato, Kashina and Kurama sealed with two deadly bloodlines. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. It was the night of the Kyuubi festival. A festival celebrating the fourth Hokage defeating the all powerful Kyuubi. Streamers was up, and so was the balloons. Shopkeepers was selling food and masks of all sorts. The majority of the kids in the village was happily playing with their parents. Some, which they was orphans, hung out together and danced. What? Why are you looking at me for? I said that. Oops, well, since the cat's out the bag, everyone was happy except a young boy named Naruto. Who is watching from in back road? HMPH. You say what? He's gone from there. He's gone from there. Well, where the hell is he over there? He's being chased by the villagers. What? I am being too loud. Oh, sorry. Well, anyways, young Naruto was running for his life, as the villager was nearly on him. Suddenly, Naruto felt a jolt go through his body. He took a left in another ally as a kanai landed where he was a second ago. Wait? There are ninjas in this rally. Oh hell no, D A T T E B A N E, let me at M. Let me at M. I'll show M not to hurt my baby boy. Minato. I will give you five ing seconds to get your hands off of me, before I make the QB attack look like a child's tantrum. Five, four, three, two, what? I hate when you were right. Fine, I guess. And besides, he did gain our bloodlines, not to mention the two you created and the ones Kurama will give him. Oh hey Kurama. Oh yeah they're torturing our Lil Sunstone. I know right, so how are we going to do that? Oh, I love it when you show your pranking side, QB. Oh he's coming. Really, this early. Oh places everyone, places. I swear to Kami Minato, if you mess this up, not even Kami going to stop me from whooping your ass. Oh shish, he's coming. He's coming. Naruto was just left to bleed put to death as he appeared into his mindscape. Suddenly lights of yellow, blue, pink, and white appeared like on a Broadway stage. We, Kashina started. We, Minato started. We, Kurama started. Are happy that you joined us. They sung together in harmony. They had their arms wide with big smiles on their faces. A big flag was up that said, Welcome to your mindscape, Naruto. Who who a r or yo you? Naruto asked. Well, Naruto, I am your ah. Minato was pushed to the ground as Kashina hugged Naruto in a motherly hug. Naruto, I'm your mother. Kashina said while hugging him, and I'm your dad. Minato joined in on the hug. Naruto started to cry as this was his first hug. How why is this real? Is that true? Naruto asked. Yes, this is true. Minato said as he and Kashina sat next to Naruto. But the old man third said that he didn't know my parents and that they died during the Kyuubi attack. Naruto was confused. We did, but your father messed of the seal, Kashina glared at Minato, who shrinks away. But it was a good thing because we got to meet you. And besides the Kyuubi was controlled by Obito Uchiha, an old student of your father, Databane. Naruto was happy that he could know his parents, but was hurt that the Hokage lied to him. Oh Naruto, we would like to tell you in your bloodlines. I have bloodlines? Cool. Naruto beamed. Cool indeed, Naruto. But let me tell you what they are. You have the Uzumaki Chakra Chains, the very rare Uzumaki ability called the Sex Style that goes along with the chains. It also allows you to change your gender as well. Your mother will teach you that. From my side, you have the rare Namikaze bloodline called Cosmic. You can use Cosmic Style, but it can be very dangerous, so I'll put that off until you master sealing and a few extra things. You also have a ultra rare Namikaze bloodline called Kami's Light. You can use light based abilities. You can also see the future, but that's because of the Uzumaki ability named Ultra Sense, a ability that allows a person to always sense things around them and everyone's emotions, and a Namikaze ability called Glimpse, a ability that allows the user to predict another person's actions, like the Uchiha's but better. We know this because if we join our chakra together in our hands, Kashina and Minato drew chakra to their hands and held them, and activate our abilities. Minato continued as Kashina's eyes dilated and his sparked. We then perfectly sync our chakra, 
Minato mixed his chakra with Kashina's and their hands glowed. Their eyes became normal but had a golden ring around them. But you won't have to do this. Kashina said. Cool, Naruto said and was about to try that but Kashina stopped him. Now now Naruto. These abilities will be unlocked by something different each time. Kurama said as she painted her giant nails. Oh yeah, I'm the Kyubi. The all-powerful demon. The strongest of the nine buju. Yada yada ya. Can I sleep now? Everyone sweat dropped. Mom. Dad can you train me? Naruto asked. Sure honey, they both said. But after you process all this information for a, a day or two. Naruto started to disappear. What's going on? He was frightened. You're waking up. Minato chuckled. Naruto don't tell Serutobi about this meeting either. He is to not be trusted, but it's good to have him thinking that you trust him. Kashina said. Okay, Ka-san. Kashina was crying at this. Before Naruto could full disappear, his parents had to say something. Oh and Naruto, yeah. He replied. We love you. He was gone. You forgot to tell him that you can talk to him telepathically. Kurama muttered lazily from her slumber. I awoke to the bright light of hospital room. The heart monitor was beeping and Lord Third was sleeping next to me. Gigi. Wake up. I yelled to my usual level. Naruto my boy, how are you? He smiled warmly but Naruto could see right through that now. Game on Lord Third, game on. I thought. I'm fine, but why do they hate me Gigi? Am I really a demon like they say? Serutobi was shocked at this. No, they're the demons for attacking a defenseless little boy. And since they burned down your house, I will allow you to live in the Hokage Tower. Now come on, let's get some ramen. He took my hand as I rushed out the bed. This is great because I can look in the office tomorrow. I mentally laughed as I smiled in the real world. Naruto awoke from his slumber, with one goal in mind. To find the scroll of sealing. Naruto grabbed an empty scroll and ink before leaving the room. He quickly tiptoed down the hallway, towards the Hokage office. Naruto quietly opened the door and peered around the corner. He quickly entered the room and looked for a portrait of Minato. Once he found it, he found a seal and unsealed it. Out came a note, a key, a map, a book, and a scroll. He put the items in the bag and put the painting back. Naruto quickly got out the room and made a beeline for the Hokage library. Naruto twisted the knob to open it, but it was locked. Ka-san, Tu-san. How can I access my chakra? Naruto asked them telepathically. Well, Naru-chan, just focus and find a warmth spot, or pool of energy. Then gently and piece by piece, tug on it. You do not want to alert the Anbu. Kashina happily recited. Thanks Ka-san. Naruto said. Kashina just squealed with Kurama. Naruto Pav. I followed my mother's instructions about using my chakra. I put my hand on the doorknob. I pushed my chakra through the door and unlocked it. Looked around and found what I was looking for. I opened the scroll of sealing. I quickly copied all the information on could onto my little scroll. I put the scroll quickly and put it back. I quickly pulled random scrolls from the shelves, to make it look like I was searching for something, because I heard someone walking down the hall. Naruto, my child, what are you doing in here? Serutobi asked as he entered the room. I pretended to jump in freight and turned towards him. With a big beaming smile I replied, Gigi. I was looking for a real ultra-powerful jutsu, so I can beat you and finally become Hokage. He smiled at this. I don't want to become Hokage, I want to burn the leaf. I thought. Yeah. And we'll help you Sochi, Kit, Kurama and Kashina yelled. Maybe we can just prove them wrong. Minato said but instantly regretted saying that. He received a beating so bad that Kami couldn't even stop Kashina and Kurama, and she tried. Third Pav Kami just accidentally gave Naruto a new bloodline, that have yet to be revealed, after her 50 tries at stopping Kashina and Kurama. Back to reality. The ancient Serutobi gave Naruto a lecture about flashy jutsu doesn't win a battle. The hard work from practicing jutsu will. Naruto barely listened and just gave the image that he was. Later that afternoon Naruto was traveling in and out of the shadowy alleyways, making his way towards the Uzumaki clan home. Cutting his finger with a kanai he stole from his Gigi, he quickly swiped his bloody finger across the blood seal. He walked through the large metal gates into a compound larger than the Uchiha's, Hyuga's, and Naris put together. 
it had five large hot springs with seals to automatically clean and warm them. Several large libraries for each category. 1. Many clan homes that should really be called mansions. Over 45 storage buildings, most filled with ramen, which had persevering seal. Naruto radiated at so much ramen. He was about to devour the precious goods, but Minato promised to give Naruto a bloodline of his to practice. As long as he to get to the training ground. So Naruto sadly made his way towards the hidden training ground that was behind the main branch house. He walked into the forest area, surrounded by seals. After doing some light stretching, Naruto was ready to go. Naruto, now that you are warmed up, it's time for me to tell you your special bloodline. Naruto smiled and repeatedly asked, What is it, now, now Naru chan? First summon us like this. Kashina said and showed him the jutsu. Now remember to put a lot of chakra into this. Minato told him. Naruto nodded before going through the hand signs before whispering, summoning no jutsu. Family edition. With a poof, Minato and Kashina joined the party, too. Well done Sochi. Kashina cheered as crushed her son between her breasts, as Minato cried in a corner, that appeared out of nowhere, about missing the feeling of her and how lucky Naruto was. It seemed that Minato didn't learn from last time about keeping his mouth closed at the right times. Not only that, he seemed to forget the last time Kashina caught him being a pervert. Mina Chan, Kashina smiled a innocent smile. Minato felt a shiver go up his spine before he looked behind him at his scary wife. He let out a girly scream and looked at Naruto for help, only for his son to give him the peace sign. Minato only felt betrayed at his son for a moment before Kashina rained down her assault on him. Same time across the village Hyuga compound Hashi, 3, Hyuga, the clan head of the main branch and side branch Hyugas, let out a terrifying scream before teleporting Hanada, Hanabi, 4, his sick wife, 5, and himself into his anti Kashina bunker, that will last them over a year and a few months. Hashi, honey, what's wrong? His ill wife asked. It's Kashina, the horrifying Kashina. She had somehow risen up from her grave and gave her wrath to some poor fellow. He was shaking in his own wet clothes. His wife shook her head as she hugged her two daughters. Back to Naruto as soon as Kashina turned around, after the fact she beat the living crap out of her husband and looked at Naruto. Now, Naru chan, let me give you the information Karama gave us about this particular bloodline. It's called physical changing, or simply change. It has no hand signs, the henge transmission is permanent, and if you change into a girl, per se, you can get pregnant. Naruto then asked, How do I do this? Just focus on what you want to be and use chakra. Karama muttered from her nap. Thanks Kura-chan, Naruto softly replied. Now problem brat. She smiled from her cage. Naruto thought of being a girl and applied a little chakra. Suddenly he felt his body change. His stomach and hips began to look like a normal four-year-old girl's. His hair became longer, almost reaching his back and his penis changed into a virgina, six. Naruto looked at Kashina, and the now conscious Minato, and smiled. Naruto. What's your name now? Minato asked as he slowly inched away from his lover. Naruko. She stated. Now Ko-chan, let's start your training. Kashina said. Naruko, Minato, and Karama matched her enthusiasm. Naruto sat in class bored as he carved in the wood with a senbon. He began to doze off when the bell rings for lunch. He stashed the senbon away and ran out the classroom, to the roof. He sat down over the edge and unsealed a bento box. B began to eat the food in his box, as a soft breeze attracted a hungry Akamichi boy and his lazy friend. The boy who followed the lovely smell of macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, and fried pork chops was near Naruto in an instant. Naruto, is that your food I smell? Choji asked as he drooled at the sight of the bento box. Naruto, smiled, before he shook his head yeah. Can I have it? The Akamichi boy asked as he almost couldn't contain himself. Troublesome, Shikamaru muttered before laying down on roof and started cloud watching. 1. Uh sure Cho. No problem. Naruto, beamed, before he gave the rest of the food to the hungry boy. Choji took a bite before his eyes became the sun he couldn't believe this tasted this good, and the way it was plated. It must be made from a restaurant. I have to find out which one. Choji thought as he swallowed the rest. Naruto, that was amazing. What restaurant did you buy it from? Naruto blushed before he rubbed his head. I made it myself. 
At this Choji nearly broke Naruto neck, as he shook him back and forth repeatedly. You have to make me some. I'll even pay you. How much 50? 70? Choji pressed on. Naruto had to think for a moment. I will sell them for 100 ryo each. Naruto said as Choji handed Naruto 100 ryo. Bring me a box tomorrow. Naruto shook his head yes. After all Naruto disliked the village after all, so why not make a profit before he left this dump anyways. 2. Naruto took a seat next to Shikamaru. The black-haired boy had his eyes closed as he enjoyed the sound of the birds in the distant. So beautiful. Naruto thought before he turned away. Shika, Naruto began. Can I ask you a favor? And then please don't judge me. Naruto sounded desperate. This puzzled the pineapple boy but nevertheless, he complied. Sure. He muttered. Can I kiss you? It's so that I can get practice in for Sakura-chan. Yeah for Sakura-chan. Naruto stuttered out as he acted embarrassed, but he threw up inside his head. Not to mention Kashina was gushing over the twunk in front of her baby boy, so he came up with that sentence. Sure but don't tell anyone, Baka. Shikamaru rolled his eyes like he didn't care. But on the inside, he was ecstatic. Thanks Shika. Naruto really smiled. He moved closer to the shadow user, who had sat up during the conversation. Naruto leaned forward and locked lips with his soon-to-be lover. So soft. Naruto thought. Kashina had fan attack at the same time. 3. Naruto deepened. The kiss, as he released some of his pheromones, trapping Shikamaru further in his spell. 4. 5. Shikamaru moaned as Naruto's tongue roamed over his. Naruto was between Shikamaru's legs, dry humping the boy. They pulled apart, a line of saliva connecting the two. Shika, can I be honest with you? The cage mage user shook his head as he panted from the kiss the two shared. Do you want to join my haram, that I'm building? Naruto said. This Shikamaru thought for a moment. Pros. Naruto will not wear me out in the bed all the time. I can walk after a night or two at his house. I can escape my mother's wrath for a couple of days. The more he thought of the pros, the more he convinced himself. Okay, but can I be in charge of the others? Shika asked. Unfortunately, no because Sasuke already has that title. And who would have thought the almighty Uchiha loves to take? Naruto laughed with Shikamaru after he told them. Shikamaru was about to ask a question, but the bell rung. Naruto kissed Shikamaru on the cheek before rushing off to class. Time skip after school in the Uzumaki Forest training ground. Come on Naruto one more time. Minato shouted at his son as his son clashed swords with his wife. Naruto and Kashina jumped back from each other. Naruto gathered chakra before he released his jutsu. Death style. Senban Sakura. He let go of his sword, as it turned into millions of Sakura petals that rushed towards Kashina. She ducked, dodged, parried as much as she could, but still taken hits. Naruto released the jutsu before trapping his mother in a shadow bind. He acquired the ability after kissing Shikamaru earlier, while using a bloodline call Learn. Learn was a bloodline that Naruto acquired from Kurama on his sixth birthday after he completed sealing to it max. Learn gives the user the ability to learn any bloodline or jutsu the other person has. This is better than the Sharingan's copying ability. Nicely done Naruto. Now I believe it is time for your date with Sasuke. Kashina said as she squealed. Her husband just shook his head and proofed both of the away. It's funny not even year ago, Sasuke was a big bad Uchiha. Now Sasuke was a Sasuke. Naruto thought, as he put on an red and gold kimono with new sandals laced with gold. It still made his ego grow. Flashback Naruto 11 years old Naruto was in his Naruko form and was walking on her way to a random river to take a dip. Upon her arrival, she started to take off her clothes and jumped in. The water was nice so she let the stream carry her off. When she came up for air, she saw the funniest thing in blackmail history. There was Sasuke in all his glory, she burst out laughing startling the young Uchiha. He turned around in a hurry, showing his very little Sasuke Jr. He must be five at best in his hardened state, Naruko thought as Kashina and Kurama had the time of their lives. Hey you there, what are you doing here? He demanded. Who are you to demand anything from me? Naruko snapped. She had decided to test young Sasuke and he didn't fail to surprise her. You're actually cute. Come be my girlfriend, and I'll give you everything you want. He did the Uchiha smirk. Naruko played like she was thinking for a moment. 
On the inside, she was laughing at the fact that little Sasuke Jr. was indeed five inches long in his hardened state. After a moment or two, Naruko decided to humor him and attack his pride at the same time. How about no you can't tame me if I gave you a manual? She giggled, but was stopped as she was grabbed by the hand by Sasuke. An Uchiha can tame anyone. She giggled some more. So you can tame anyone how about me? Naruko became Naruto again. Sasuke nearly had a whole heart attack. He stumbled back and saw Naruto in his full body. Naruto looked down, saw Sasuke was harder, and laughed some more. The Uchiha didn't like that, so he decided to, tame, the Uzumaki. Get down on your knees and suck my. Sasuke said as he tried to make Naruto get on his knees by his hair. Naruto quickly maneuvered himself around Sasuke and made him get on his knees, in front of his mighty ten inches. No you suck on my. Naruto told him. How dare you make an Uchi AHK, Sasuke couldn't finish because Naruto stuck his in his mouth, and held Sasuke on it. Sasuke was choking on it sending pleasure through Naruto. Taking it out, Naruto slapped Sasuke's face with his ensmearing, Kree, and spit over his lips, cheeks, and chin. Sasuke lips was pink and he was coughing. Naruto pushed him back and forth on his, taking in this chance at taking down his rival, as he proclaimed in the academy. Sasuke tried to mold chakra, but Naruto put a chakra seal on him. Seeing that he couldn't mold chakra anymore, Sasuke began to struggle a bit. He still fought but not as much as Naruto made a clone, that started to eat Sasuke out, drawing even more moans out of the boy. After a few minutes, the clone proofed. Naruto wasn't even holding his hair no more and Sasuke was still sucking his, with surprised ease. Like a true sucker at heart. Please Naruto. Sasuke asked him as he was pushing on his clone's tongue. Deciding to hit him on his pride, Naruto smirked. Please what? Naruto replied as he continued to smack his on Sasuke's face and some pre was smeared on his nose, forehead, and eyelid. It was a beautiful sight to see. Please give me it. Sasuke muttered after a couple of slaps. Give you what? I don't know what to give you. You got to tell me. Naruto shrugged. He was enjoying himself as he watched Sasuke pride be destroyed piece by piece. Please. Me. But you in me. Ravish my hole and claim it as yours. Sasuke stammered out as he was sucking on the pole in front of him. Deciding to grant his wish, Naruto pushed him away and on his back. Spreading his pale legs, Naruto made a blushing Sasuke look at him. Are you sure? The Uchiha nods and gasped as Naruto pulled away. What are you, Sasuke began but was in awe as he saw the jutsu Naruto did. Sex style. Pre-production. Naruto started to produce gallons of pre. Naruto laughed as he saw Sasuke drool at the sight of the pre. One more time, are you sure? Naruto asked and pushed in with more ease because of the pre acting as lube, after he saw Sasuke nod. He began with slow thrusts as to let Sasuke adjust to his size. Nngh nngh nngh, Sasuke moaned as Naruto hit his prostate over and over. Naruto let out grunts in Sasuke's ear as he nibbled on them. Faster. Sasuke demand and did multiple intakes as Naruto started to pummel his insides. Naruto started to jerk Sasuke off as he pile dived into Sasuke. Damn it's so big. Ah. So deep in me. Ughhh. Thank you. Ah. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sasuke cried with actual tears, as Naruto pushed past the second hole in him. Who's your man? Naruto asked as he made clones pull Sasuke's checks apart. He went deeper and deeper because of it. You, you, you. Sasuke continued to cry out as he was overstimulated. Who's the Sime? Huh? Naruto asked, as his doubled his speed, making Sasuke see stars. Sasuke started muttering thank you in every language possible. Naruto smirked at this. Then Naruto thought of an idea. Naruto flipped Sasuke on top of him and made him ride him. Na na Naruto I I I am close. Sasuke hugged him as he couldn't even hold himself up anymore. Me too. Do you want it in you or on you? Naruto grunted out as he was jackhammering the other boy's hole, making some cute squish noises. In me daddy, in me. Sasuke slurred as he couldn't handle it. Ah you ghhh. Sasuke came splashing Naruto in his and began to pulse as Naruto continued to hit his button. Gah. Sex style. Continuous river of. 
Naruto cried as he did the hand seals and blew loads upon loads in Sasuke hole. Sasuke's stomach swelled in size as his butt couldn't handle it. Some came out as Naruto continued to the raw hole. Naruto pulled out shooting his back with some and aimed at Sasuke's face, after pushing him off softly. He sprayed his jizz all over his face. Some even go in Sasuke's eyes and hair. Feeling it close to an end, Naruto pulled Sasuke's covered face on his and continued to down his throat. After it finally finished, Naruto bent over kissed Sasuke's my lips. After five more rounds of Sasuke Ming eight times, Naruto was spent and Sasuke was impregnated. Was gushing out in rivers from his ass. Tick tock tick tock tick the clock spoke as this test went on. Just earlier maybe five or ten minutes ago it begun, but I'm already done. I could play Shoji with Shika, but he's asleep and there's this, thirty minute, test. Ooh a moom mm 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 d a a a a a a a a a a a d d d I'm so bored. I thought to them, Sochi that's easy to solve, just use your chains to prank people around you. On another note and since you're saving up money, you can use your chains to steal money from Mizuki Baka. But don't tell your father, okay honey. Mom said with a smile that said break this little agreement and see what happens. I mentally shook my head. I guess dad is still sleeping from the beating mom gave him last night for forgetting to tell me about the forge in the Namikaze estate. I shivered at the memory. Time's up. Now Mizuki coming around and collecting all the tests and I'm grade them later. Aruka said as Mizuki started to collect the papers. I got up and handed my test to Aruka. Naruto, I told y'all that Mizuki is collecting them. Aruka said as he was collecting the kanai and ninja stars for the next test. No offense Aruka, but I don't trust that Baka to take my test and not change it. With that I lined up and left to the academy's training ground. Upon arriving at the training ground I saw test dummies lined up 10 feet. Away in Sasuke's, whore girls. Sorry I meant, fan thoughts, oops, fangirls surrounding him, just adding on to the clout and his already big ass, ego. I just rolled my eyes at the fact that they was trying to get my man. He was convincing enough though. Kiba's was storming up to Sasuke in anger, but tripped. What next happened shocked us all. When Kiba's tripped, he fell and kissed Sasuke's lips. They both froze after moving away from each other. Kiba's because the fangirls was about to rip him another asshole, and Sasuke because of what I would do to him. I will just have to teach Kiba not to mess with what's mine. I just gave him an innocent smile that my mother was so proud of, she said she will teach me the arts of poisons and medical training. I just smiled and mentally hugged her. After the, let's beat up Kiba Baka event, Aruka started the second test. The accuracy test. Kiba scored 5-6, just passing. Shino scored 6-7 along with Choji and Shika. I know he can hit them all, but chose to be lazy. I congratulated Shika with a gleam in my eyes, that only he can see. He turned pale and thanked me. Sakura and Ino surprisingly scored 8-7. Hanada-chan scored 9-7 and Sasuke scored 9-9. Then it was my turn. I grabbed the two heavy ninja stars and kanai and threw the at the same time. The weapons bounced of each other at precise angles got embedded into the wood bull's eyes. I turned around to face their shocked faces. Oops, I guess I forgot my own strength. I said with a chuckle. Then Sakura started screaming nonsense so put a seal on her freakishly large forehead and activated. Everyone was happy about that, even the teachers. The seal will go off in 10 minutes. I said. UGHH people can be annoying as hell. I thought. Agreed. Kurama muttered. Hey Kura-chan wanna come out when it's my turn. I really wanted to scare Mizuki Baka. Sewer. She moaned and laid back down. I just smiled. Naru, Aruka started but I was already there. Let's get this over with. I muttered lazily. OMG someone is following me. I'm so proud. Kurama wiped a tear away before continuing to build her puzzle. I chuckled. All right, Naruto, please preform three clones, Aruka said. Can it be another type of clone? I asked. Sure. Aruka looked puzzled. Water, earth, lightning, wind, blood, fire, and sound clones. I said as six clones appeared in front of them. How, when, who, Aruka nearly fainted. Mizuki looked angry but stilled his emotions. I dispelled them, making the earth clone crumble. The wind clone burst into a breeze. The lighting clone discharged, the water sprinkled into a mist, the sound clone burst like a cannon, 
the fire clone burst before all was left was smoke. A al alrai write Naruto, please replace yourself with something else when Mizuki throw the kanai. Iruka spoke clearly trying to get himself together. Mizuki grinned and threw the kanai at high chunin speed, shocking Iruka. Before Iruka could lecture him, I replaced myself with an Ichi Ichi Paradise Volume 6 and quickly did another one with an explosion seal, that was activated, and another one with a pen on Iruka's desk. All in three seconds. The kanai ripped the book and an explosion was heard from somewhere else. All right transform into a someone. Iruka said holding his heart. Can I do another type of transformation? I asked. Sure. Aruka sat down and waved his hand. I transformed into Naruko in an instant. I walked up to Aruka and got on my knees. I rubbed towards the insides of his legs. Will this do Ru Chan? I asked as I gripped his before he jumped away from me. At this Mizuki was feeling pressed. Cough what type of transformation is that Naruto it's Naruko well Naruko. Aruka asked. Well it's a physical transformation and that's all I will tell you. I asked as I played with my hair. What? It's so soft. All right, for extra credit, can you do an extra jutsu of your own? Aruka asked. I just nodded. Uzumaki style. The truth of the forest. I shouted as thousands of chains came out of the ground and captured Mizuki Baka and Aruka in them. This jutsu is my own jutsu that I created. It uses my Uzumaki bloodline, chakra chains, and my midnight bloodline together to force anyone trapped into the chains to tell the truth. Now, Mizuki Baka. What do you really think of me? I asked him. I think of you as the QB brat that was born 12 years ago. He said. Just as I thought. What are your plans for this village? I asked. I was planning to steal the scroll of sealing and give it to Orochimaru sama to get power from him. And I was going to rape you, he told us. I just shook my head. I then turned to Aruka. What did you think of my transformation? I asked. I thought you was sexy as hell and I wanted to have your lips wrapped around my. I wanted to have sex with you after, he told me. I walked up to him on my hands and knees. I graped his pants and pulled them down with his underwear. His nine inch was leaking pre. I started to jerk him off. Do you like it? I asked in a luring tone. Yeah, he replied in between moans. We'll continue this later. I got up and released him. Now Aruka Chan, can I do two more jutsu? He just nodded. Uzumaki style. Imprisonment. The chains around Mizuki wrapped around him like a cocoon with a single chain leading up to my back. Summoning style. Kurama. I shouted. Kurama came out of the smoke in her human form and hugged me. One. I'm so proud of you, Kit. You know what? Just for completing this jutsu, I'ma teach you the fox style and the jutsus. I started jumping up and down with her. Now, let take this Baka to Ibiki and Anko Chan. She said and I just nodded. We started to walk out but Aruka stopped us and gave me a headband and put it around my neck. Can Kura Chan get one too? I asked. Sure. He said and gave her one and she copied me. I hugged him and groped his ass with my hands and slid a piece of paper in his pocket. I kissed him on his lips with tongue. Check your pockets. I told him and left after getting the porn book from the wall. After Naruto and Kurama dropped Mizuki Baka off at the tea building, they went shopping. Walking down the shopping district, people moved aside for the two. Yes, they still hated him, but they fear what he will do now that he is a full ninja now. He just signed and entered into a shop that actually let him in. Hey Rui-kun, Yui-kun. I'm here for my order. Naruto said as Kurama went back in the seal, having enough of the stupid humans. Oh Naru-chan, nice to see you. How have you been? I see you've became a genin. Yui said. I've been doing a lot of training, so I've been doing good. I actually became Genin today. How's the baby? He asked as he was getting money out of Gama Chan. It's good, but we are looking for names now, though. Yui said. Maybe you can use Yuki for a girl and Menma for a boy? Naruto said, counting the Ryo in his hand. Here you go, Naruto, my boy. Rui said, placing Naruto's outfits on the counter. Rui kun, Naru chan has came up with two very good names for us. Yui said to her husband. How's Yuki for the girl, and Menma for the boy? Yui asked Rui. Naruto my boy, you are a genius. Thank you for these names. Rui said with a heartwarming smile. Well you're welcome Rui-kun. Naruto returned the smile and turned to leave. Oh Naru-chan, before you leave. 
Do you want to become godmother and father? Yui asked. Naruto froze scaring the two. Tears flowed from Naruto's eyes. Yes, yes, yes. Naruto shouted with a smile that beat the suns, one, all three hugged, making a wonderful scene. But all good things has to end. Hey everyone, the QB is attacking these young couple. A villager yelled. Sure, they was afraid of Naruto, but they wasn't going to let him, attack, anyone. Naruto placed two seals on both of them and gave them a hug before teleporting out. Naruto appeared in the tower in the forest of death. In the past he had made it a safe house, well the very secret room he created for Itachi and himself. Flashback he had wandered into forest while Itachi was training, two years before the Uchiha massacre. Naruto could barely use his midnight ability or teleport for the matter, so he was stuck to running. He was beaten badly and Itachi took care of him. Since then and up to the deaths of the Uchihas, they became friends, then boyfriends. The night Itachi killed the Uchihas, Itachi was already slowly dying and wanted one last night with Naruto. So Naruto became Naruko and gave her virginity to him in sweet, soft love making. He was gone the next day, but left a note, too. Now it was only used as a ceiling, poison, antidotes, and bomb development room now. Flashback end so Naruto just sat down at the work table near his bed and started working on an unfinished seal. It was seal that can transfer bijus from one host to another, without killing them. It was way past 9 o'clock before Naruto finished the seal and 12 more of them. Naruto made note to add Kiba and Choji to his harem, before he could move on to step 3 of his plan to get the hell out of Konoha. He took a shower there before leaving the hideaway. Naruto appeared in his apartment and walked out the door with one goal in mind. To destroy Ichiraku's ramen storage. With Gama-chan full and in his pockets, he entered the restaurant with his award-winning smile. Hey old man. One extra large miso ramen with extra pork, and keep them coming. Ayame, SP. Greeted him with a smile as Tuchi, SP. Was already working on the order. Naruto how have you been? Ayame asked. It's been great. The book is coming along great too. Naruto hinted at her from his seat at the bar. 3. No longer than 5 minutes has gone by before Tucci gave Naruto his first bow. So after an hour of endless chatter, and obviously looks from the villagers, over a hundred bowels was littered on the counter. I'll let you both know how the book is going next time. Oh and one more thing, it that new drawing I made is put up in this stand. Naruto discreetly hinted. Yeah I put it up yesterday. Tucci told him while wiping off the counter. Oh that's good. He let out a sigh. Naruto stood up and hugged both of them and gave Ayame the amount that he owed. Buy Ayame, old man. Naruto yelled and exit the building. It was the next day and Naruto along with Kurama, in her fox form, was in the Hokage office to register her as his ninja fox. Just as Naruto was going to open the door, Kakashi burst through the door with Anko and a large snake was on his trail. Help me Lord Hokage. Please save my precious collection. Kakashi screeched, hiding behind Serutobi's robe. Lord Third, release him so I can give him hell, for comparing my to one of those damn characters in that smut. Anko roared with anger. Her key was saying, rage, rage, ing rage. Four. This had Serutobi sweating. Naruto used this as a distraction to change the information on the papers, while nobody was watching. He quickly ran to Anko with an innocent look and asked, what is smut? Everyone there tensed as Anko opened her mouth. Well Naru-chan, it's adult stuff that happens in the wretched books, like Ichi Ichi Paradise, and some movies that women and some men hate, everyone breathe out in relief. But enough about that, Kakashi I'm about to, her sentience cut off as Kakashi was gone. Anko let out a sigh full of annoyance, then she turned back to me. Say kid, I have seen some of your pranks. Do you want to study under me and Ibiki Baka in the TID? Five. She asked. Naruto could tell from the paling of Serutobi face, he would dread his answer. So to with him badly, Naruto said yes. Anko cheered and Serutobi banged his head on the table, mutter why over and over. After Naruto mentally cheered and looked at the clock, he saw that it was ten minutes till it was time for his class to start. So being the adorable boy he is, he asked Anko if she could drop him off at the academy. Anko agreed and teleported in front of the building and gave Naruto the key times when he can come by TID. Naruto was livid. Not on was the human banshee that was named Sakura was screeching, he was stuck with her constantly telling at him to move so that she can sit next to what was mine. This being Sasuke, 
and Kakashi was three ing hours late. He decided to mess with Sasuke. He snakes a chakra chain from his leg, up Sasuke's pants, and around his soft. Feeling the chakra chains around his manhood, Sasuke jumped a little and gasped. Sakura didn't realize this, as she was fantasizing about Sasuke and Kurama was sleeping. Naruto moved the chains in a back and forwards motion. Sasuke was trying not to moan, as he was clenching the table in his teeth. Sasuke was sweating slot and panting lightly before he tensed up. He shot his load in his pants as Kakashi came through the door. Sorry I'm late I, Kakashi was cut off as Naruto's kanai nailed his book to the wall. Kakashi cried and before he could say something, Naruto cut him off. No one cares why you're late, get on with it perv. Kakashi sulked and said, all right, team 7, on the roof in 5 minutes, and proofed away. Naruto Pav. So after the four of us reached the roof, we started the introductions. It took us 15 minutes and all I found out was a, all about Sasuke mask, b, Sakura is going to be useless, c, Kakashi is a pervertic freak, that I can use, and d, everything I already knew. Ok guys meet me at training ground 7 tomorrow at 7, for out test, Kakashi rushed out before poofing away. I got up and left yelling the other two goodbye, before making my way to the TID. You're a natural, Naru chan Anko compliments, as I gave her the information from a prisoner. Thanks, Ankoheim. I really enjoy you teaching me things. I reply and send my pheromones towards her. I could tell it's working because she shifted closer to me. No problem Naru, she flyers back. I did hand signs behind my back and whispered, sex style, erection. My stood up. Anko must have noticed because she smiled. I pretended to be flustered about it. How about we talk at my place? So after an hour of her explaining the whole birds and the bees things, she taught me about seduction and let me sign the snake contract. Funny thing is, the snakes likes me better than Orochimaru and Anko. They even made me their head summoner. 6. So I walked down the alleyways trying to get to my apartment. Karama went back into her seal and after I left Anko's, so I was alone and bored. So I decided to add Choji to my harem. I walked to his family's barbecue place and he was eating at a table alone. Hey Cho. I said sexily as I sat next to him. Oh hey oh Naruto. What are you doing here? He asked with a mouthful. I smirked, nothing. I was passing by and saw you eating alone. So naturally, I wanted to keep you company. I smiled as I released some of my pheromones. He smiled and offered me some pork, and I accepted some. So until closing time, I was working Choji until he was in my full control. We parted ways, but not before I kissed him on the lips and left. Step 2 was almost complete. So it was 8 o'clock, and I was at Sasuke's enjoying free time with my harem. Shika and Kiba was tired out and had their full of my Choji who was actually skinny but still kinda fat because his outfit made him look fat, was riding me during his fourth round. Sasuke, was sucking him as I sucked on his. I'm coming. Choji yelled and came in Sasuke's mouth, while Sasuke released in my mouth. I kept pounding until I impregnated Choji. I let out puffs of breaths and Choji rolled on his sides, paralyzed. I then got up and kissed everyone on the lips and led Sasuke into the shower. After three quick s and an actual shower, we was in our way to training ground 7. Saku Ho was already there. Naruto Yubaka, ill Ike. She couldn't finish because I threw a three boxes worth of tic tacs into her mouth. Seriously, her breath smelled like eight cans of shark shit. She passed out, her body hitting the ground and knocking the mints out of her mouth. Kakashi appeared out of the trees that he had been hiding in for the longest. I quickly activated the seal under him and his book erupted into flames. How could you? He cried in sorrow. It took an hour longer because he arranged a burial for the book. He even made a stone plate for it. He was being so over dramatic. We finally started the test. I hid behind the tree near Sasuke. Sakura was knocked out by Kakashi five minutes ago. I sent a shadow clone to Sasuke while I took Kakashi on. It was going good for a few minutes with me showing about mid chunin skills, before it went bad. I missed Kakashi by 3 seconds and all I felt was fingers breaking through my walls. I flew into the lake rubbing my anus angrily. Oh he was going to get it later. I rushed out the lake and woke up Sakura weak ass. We attacked Kakashi together, with little to no arguments, and I grabbed the bells and tossed them to Sasuke and Sakura. The bell rung, we had just passed the test. Hey Naru-chan, how the test go? 
Anko asked as Ibiki and her was eating the vent boxes I made for them. Well Kakashi got there three hours late, I burned Kakashi's book, he had a whole burial, Kakashi anally violated me, I got my team together, I got the bells, and he tied me to the pole and let the villagers beat me up. I said as I looked down and finished writing my report on the perverted fool who got caught doing things to the academy girls. I used my pheromones to influence Ibiki into liking me. In the city of Konoha, on a cool sunny day, the birds was singing their morning tunes. The villagers was doing their daily things. The children was playing in the parks. The ninjas of their village was coming and going here and there. It seems everything was normal for everyone. Everyone except for one Jonan named Kakashi. He was getting tortured for violating his student Naruto, who was watching with a smile fit for an evil person. This is the day that Kakashi wished to never get on Naruto's bad side. As for young Naruto, he thanked both TID workers and drug his sensei to the hospital. As young Naruto was looking at his beat-up teacher, he realized that he could actually use him. So the devious prankster pulled down the black mask of Kakashi and kissed him. What Naruto didn't know was that Kakashi was awake and was pretending to be asleep. So after Naruto took a picture of the burr-faced Kakashi, Naruto let out a burst of chakra into the older male, making said male fall under his spell. With a confession to liking his teacher, Kakashi gently replied to the youthful, shudders, team that he need time to figure out his feelings. Naruto nodded at his potential pawn, and gripped the third leg that Kakashi had gotten when Naruto kissed him. Minato, are you listening? Good, you better be, you know, I think I'll tell him of my old home, Uzugakur. Hum, you are going to activate his new bloodline. Let's get started, Datbame. Naruto Pav, I walked out of the hospital smiling. I has gotten three new pawns at my disposal. Now all I got to do is wait for Itachi to tell me if he had started on getting any of the materials I need. I ninja ran across the building tops towards the academy. I needed to ask Aruka if he knew anyone who can help me in genjutsu or elemental jutsu. I crashed through the window, scaring the shit out of the students. I rolled and pulled out my sword and put it at Aruka's neck. The class was shocked. I changed my voice into a deeper almost demonic one and said, for the crimes against the Uchiha prince, your punishment is a hug. I hugged him from the back and put up my sword. Naruto, what are you doing here? Where did you get a sword? Why did you crash through the window? You scared the children. He rushed out as he nearly had a heart attack. Well Aruka, I came here to ask you if you knew anyone to teach me elemental jutsu or genjutsu. As for my entrance, I wanted to scare you. Ya know, if I wanted to, I could have killed you and you wouldn't even know it. Dadbeo, I rambled. Well Naruto, I have chakra paper in my desk. We can check your chakra nature with that and I have some C-rank ninjutsu in there too. Can you come back later after my class is over? He asked asked. Yeah, sure Aruka, but I think you want me all alone for yourself Iru-chan. I whispered to him the last part quietly. As for genjutsu, Talk to my friend Kurunai Yui. She live next to me. I'll take you to her after school. But what about Kakashi? Shouldn't he be helping you? He asked. Well Kakashi is in the hospital because he stuck his fingers in my ass. I told Anko Ne and Ibiki Ni and they beat his ass. I told him. I saw a shiver go down his body but I shrugged it off. I quickly hugged him goodbye and slipped a note in his pocket before I left. It's been a week and Kakashi has been released from the hospital. I trained with Kurunai when we both aren't doing anything. Kashina told me about Uzu and where it's located. I drew up blueprints and when we can meet up next. Currently we are on our way to get a D rank mission. Once at the door, I kick it down and ran at Serutobi. Old man. I yelled and hugged him. I slipped a trace less seal on him. How have you been doing? Serutobi asked with his fake ass smile on. Great old man, but can we please, please, please get a cool mission? I begged. Well there's the catch Tora mission, the, I cut him off. We'll take it. Every Jonan and up Shinobi shivered. I quickly grabbed the scroll and dashed out the door. We searched the forest of death for Tora correction Sakura, Sasuke, and Kakashi searched the forest. Tora and I sat by the tower in the middle and at the tuna fish I made and talked about what I need Tora to do for my next step. So Tora I need you to give Itachi these blueprints and notes for me. I told him, sure thing Naruto, 
And where is the written reports on all the useful things I found out? Gato is on the move in the Wave County by the way. Tora said as we made an exchange. Now we need to get back before they have a stroke. I said. Tora rolled his eyes and hopped into my arms, purring as I started to stroke his fur. Where are you guys? I found TKRA an hour ago. I'm by the gate, I said in the microphone. Naruto Baka ill, why didn't you say anything before? We'll be on our way, HN, they all said. Five minutes later they arrived. Banshee hair was a bird's nest, Sasuke was dirty and sweaty, and Kakashi was annoyed. I was rolling with laughter. Naruto, Sakura rushed at me with a weak ass punch. I rolled under her, kicked both of my legs out at her stomach, and made her fly into the next three trees. Oops, I said as Tora jumped back into my arms rubbing against me. Asterisk Sai let's head back. Kakashi said as he picked up the banshee. Everyone was shocked at the sight of Tora being nice to me. I gave Tora back to her owner and asked for a higher mission. Well Naruto I can't do that. I cut him off again. Old man if you grant me ten favors no matter what they are, I'll tell you the secret to defeating your paperwork. He rushed at me and shook me over and over. Yes, 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 whatever it takes. Everyone's sweat dropped at the seam. Well first before we make any deal, old man, I'll need you to pour your blood into this seal. I told him. Naruto where did you learn sealing from? Sarutobi asked. Some old hermit pervert looking dude dropped a couple as he was chased by females. I picked it up and looked at it. And it said, at last to me, blood contract seal. I tested one out with Kakashi's supervision, and it worked. There was a mark on each of our arms until he did what he said. After he bought me ramen, our marks disappeared. I explained my lie. I used Kakashi because his mark was to agree with me when I lied to Sarutobi twelve times. Is this true Kakashi? Sarutobi asked. Yes Lord Hokage. Kakashi said as he read his book. Okay Naruto let's do it. We put blood on the seal and said that he'd do me ten favors and without asking questions. I said that I'll tell him the secret to defeating paperwork. The seal glowed and a diamond appeared on our wrist. It had a blue mark for me and green for Sarutobi. Alright, old man, the secret to defeating paperwork is the shadow clone jutsu. Sarutobi slammed his head against the floor repeatedly, yelling stupid over and over again. Okay, old man, I need you to do me three favors. I said with a smirk on my face. Bring them on, he said begrudgingly. First, write me a pass giving me Sanin rights. I told him, he looked shocked, but quickly wrote me the pass and gave it to me. Secondly, I need you to disband and kill the civil in council. He again looked shocked but called Anbu to do the tasks. Sakura was still out so, she couldn't do anything. Everyone, who didn't know my plan, looked shocked. He nodded his head core me to continue. Third, I need you to give me all of the scrolls above Chunin to me. At this he protested, but the seal activated. It started to crawl up his arm towards his heart, while slowly increasing the voltage of electricity giving to him. He shook his head finally and told some more Anbu to fetch all of the scrolls one asked for. It's nice doing business with you, old man. I said as I asked Kakashi to put them in a storage scroll. Well, old man, I need to get on my way. I promised Aruka to meet him for dinner. I hugged Sarutobi again before I dashed put of the room. So what should this bloodline be called? The Seven Deadly Sins. Why? Ooh. Okay. Okay you ready? One, two, three, look Minato, it's working. He should feel the pain in a few minutes and pass out. I hope Naruto like it. I love this one already. Hey, Minato, let's go out. It been a while since we did it. Okay it's settled. Once Naruto wake up, let's go out for dinner. Oh shish, something is happening. What is that root Anbu doing? Naruto, on your left. I was walking through the training grounds after the date with Aruka. It was nice and simple. I even told him about my true skills. I still need to work on my puppetry jutsu though. I guess I can send a clone to Suna to retrieve some. I should steal an updated bingo book too. Hum I guess I can do that tomorrow. I suddenly jumped up, dodging kanai and throwing stars. I was surrounded by a group of five chunin. I obviously can't show my true powers, so I dulled them down. By a lot, I ran at one with chunin level speed. 
I used a chakra chain to wrap around him. I flung him into another. Shadow clone jutsu. I yelled out as three clones appeared next to me. Clone one used a chakra chain to battle two of the chunin, the other used a earth jutsu to knock one away. One chunin rushed at me with a katana filled with wind chakra, the other one shot fire bullets at me. I grabbed a kanai from my pocket and dodged the katana, but got hit by one of the fire bullets. Cut the katana welding one stomach, receiving three cuts across the chest. I stuck the kanai in the chunin who was trying to run a chakra blade into MG heart. I turned the chunin into the incoming katana attack. I pushed the dead guy into the attacker before using a jutsu. Wind style. Great breakthrough. Both of them flew into the building, knocking down the wall. Chain style. Forest of destruction. I yelled as chakra chains erupted from the going and impaled one of the other chunin from earlier. My shadow clones disappeared and I was too slow to block a sword attack from the last chunin. Pain of unimaginable hit me. The blade was five seconds from staving me. Heavy metal. I shout all of the sudden in my earth chakra and nature hardened around my skin into a hard shield. The sword shattered upon contact with my skin. I felt more people on the way so I had to finish this fast. I pushed a Rasagan into his stomach. He flew back into the air before hitting the ground. Not even three seconds, Serutobi arrived along with the clan's heads and Anbu. Gigi, I, I collapsed onto the ground, still heavy due to the new jutsu I preformed haven't ended. So you're telling me that I got a new bloodline? Naruto asked his parents and the most powerful tailed beast. Yes Sochi, you see me and your dad was searching your landscape because we was bored, and we found this box that said new bloodline. So me and your dad looked into the future, to see what you could do with it Dadbane. Once we saw this, we instantly named it after a group of friends tittles, from how badass they was. Dadbane, it's now called, the seven deadly sins bloodline because this can be broken down in the family line. Kashina, his mother, said with excitement. Yes son, as you you already know, one of these skills is heavy metal. This covers the user in a hard, unbreakable metal, that the user can use as a perfect defense. No physical or chakra damage can be received, depending by how much chakra that the user put into this. Minato, the once famed fourth Hokage said. Also Kit, I can train you in these abilities, at Kitsune Clearing later, one. If you want. Kurama yawned, sure Kura-chan, but let me explain all this to that Baka outside and obtain the wood release. See ya, Dadbeo. Well we can't do any healing jutsus because of whatever that is covering his body, seems to block any chakra or physical from doing anything to the boy's body. Someone said, well, Tsunade, thank you for your effort. Serutobi said, well that's enough to gather information. Era, Gigi, where am I? Why is there so many people in here? I asked in a childlike manner. How did you know many people was here? He was shocked. Well I can just feel their emotions and chakra. I always could do this. I replied as I took the blanket off me. Serutobi looked as to be in thought as he held his beard. I dismissed him as I looked at Tsunade and hugged her. Are you my doctor? I asked as I focused on getting her knowledge of medical jutsu and bloodline. Yes, Naru-chan, I am. She replied as she patted my head. Cool, can you help me in my medical jutsu? I asked giving her my trademark puppy eyes jutsu. Sure, she said with glee then wonder, but how do you know medical ninjutsu? Well with the villagers beating me up and the shinobis occasionally helping, I had to learn somehow. Or I'd be dead, I said like it was nothing. Tsunade then got a glint in her eyes and popped her knuckles. Oh they did, huh? Well sensei. Why didn't you stop this, hem? She asked as he cowered from her menacing gaze. Please don't hurt Gigi. After all he has to deal with paperwork all day. It fills his day up that he can't even read his book that he hides in his robes. I mean why do people like those books? The Jonin that teaches Konohamaru, reads it. I even caught him peeking in the hot springs with an old hermit looking dude. The hermit dude even dropped one of the books and it fell open. All the book had in it was nude people. He even told me to keep it, but I gave it to Gigi. I rambled as Serutobi paled and locked at me to shut up and Tsunade was getting angrier. Anno told me to stay away but why do Gigi and that dude like those books so much? Gigi even has a whole collection in his office with a genjutsu over it. 
I saw it by a picture of a dude who looks a little like me. Hum now that I think about it. Do I have any relations with him? I asked as the people in my mind was dying from laughter. Thank you for telling me this Naru-chan, meet me in an hour and I'll train you in medical ninjutsu and my secrets. Now sensei, let's have a talk, she said as I waved by the Sarutobi and hightailed it out of there screaming ramen at the top of my lungs. Now it's time to get more allies. It already been three hours and I had Hinata under my thumb, even training her in Eno. I am now heading for Shino next. Hey Shino, do you got a minute? I asked as he stopped by an alleyway. Sure, what's up? He asked, can I tell you a secret? But you have to promise not to tell or not be my friend. I pretended to be vulnerable. Sure, I promise. I could tell he was smiling. I pulled him into the alley and, prepared, myself. Shino, I I I I think I got a crush on you. I was, blushing from ear to ear. He was stunned but quickly recovered. I in don't know what to say. I am flattered but, I don't know what to say. He sputtered out, well, can I at least do something then we can forget about this? I asked as I charged up my moonlight ability. Ah uh, sure, he was unsure, but that quickly changed as I kissed him. Now he was trapped, we started to make out in the alleyway. Our hot breaths coming out in pants. I started to grind against his groin, as he wrapped his arms around my neck. I trailed my kisses down his neck. Ah m m m m m m h. He started to moan and press my head against his neck, as I covered his mouth. I pulled away and teleported to my house. I dropped him on the bed, taking off our shirts. Shino, I dreamed about this since the academy. He moaned in delight as I sucked on his nipple. I put my fingers in his mouth. Suck, I demanded. Shino eagerly sucked on my fingers, getting them slick. I took his pants and underwear off in one go. I put his size 6 into my mouth going down three inches then going up two. Until I reached his pubic hair. He grabbed my hair and held me against his pole, gasping out loudly. I took my fingers out of his mouth and put one into him. I could feel how tight and moist his insides are. It honestly made nay harder. I started to slowly fingering him, moaning so that my vibrations will send him over the edge faster. I am about to. He suddenly shouted and painted my throat with ropes and ropes of delicious. I slowly pulled away and kissed his lips passionately. I really did like him. So he won't be a part of the later plans. Shino, will you join my harem? I asked as he came down from his high. Yes, I think I would like that. He said, Rhino, let's take this slow. I don't want to rush things with you. I said, actually wanting to do him right. Sure we can do it, and I will be ready when you are. He said hugging me from behind. My heart did a double beat and I smiled. Shino, I said as we started to dress. Let me take you home. Naruto had just dropped Shino home, before he realized something. He forgot to get the scrolls, and a mission. So with a speed level, that made Minato a little jealous, he ran until he found Kakashi in a bookstore. When I opened the glass door, he just simply held up a scroll. Thanks Kashi, I said. Hey. Get out of here, you filthy demon, the store owner yelled. Kakashi was about to do and say something but I slapped a paralysis seal on him. I turned around and bitch slapped the owner. He fell to the ground. Now, do we want to try this again? I asked. The owner looked at me in fear before yelling. H ho how dare you you demon. I'll have you hanged. I just chakra kicked him in the head with my foot. God he was annoying. I took the seals of Kakashi and kissed him before I left the bookstore. I skipped all the way towards Aruka's house, not giving any s about the glares. Naruto let out a sigh of happiness from succeeding in a new style of jutsu. The Rasengan style. He had created two jutsu for the five elements. One for offensive, and one for defensive. It was quite a feat. Minato even started training Naruto on the cosmic style bloodline, but Naruto only learned about five out of the 100 for the style. Naruto patted his hands together before disappearing in the casino. It was time for Naruto to slowly drain Konoha of its money. So with a henge, Naruto went by every slot hitting a jackpot. He didn't stop until his achieved 10 billion Ryo. He sealed the money into a scroll and left discreetly. He had just bumped into Hanada as he was getting away. Oh sorry Hanada-chan, I wasn't looking where I was going. I said with my famous smile. It's okay na na Naruto-kun. She stuttered out, embarrassed. 
Say Hanada chan, my team will be going out of the village for a mission at some point. Can you help me make some healing bomb, please? I just started a week ago. I shyly asked. What? She is actually cute. Sure I did like her, so it's not like I'm going to do her like I will eventually do to some of the others. I'll just treat her like I will treat Shino. S sure. I'll be bh ha happy t2. She was red as Ka San's hair. Well come on Hanada chan. Let's go to my room in the Hokage tower. I beamed. She started to follow me into the tower. I let her into my room. She gasped at the interior. Yo your ro um is ni ice, na Naruto chan. She said. Thanks, this is my medical table. I pointed to my desk by the wall. We spent most of the afternoon working on medical medicine for my team. The whole time Hanada was red in the face. After we finished the last one, I turned to Hanada who was looking down at the table. Hanada chan. I asked, yes Naruto-kun? She asked while stuttering. I'm struggling with something. I told her while using a new technique I perfected called, charm speak. It utilized my midnight ability into my voice. Right now I am using the second version called, persuasion. I feel confused by my feelings. But I feel like telling you because you're my best friend right? I finished as I looked away. Yeah Naruto, I am your best friend. Tell me all about your feelings. I won't tell anyone. She stuttered out. I looked back at her and hugged her. Well Hinata chan, I have feelings of something towards other guys and girls, that make my thing down there hard. Sometime it won't go down until I take a cold shower or even after I had experimented with some of the others. What could that mean? I confessed. Hinata blushed at that, but that deepened when she felt my junior poke her hard. Well that's feelings of sexual attractions, Naruto-kun. She stuttered out. I pulled away from her and turned towards my bed, looking like I am trying to process the information. Uh, Naruto-kun. If you don't mind telling me, who do you have these feelings for and have you done, it, with them? She stuttered as she was tapping her pointer fingers together. I blushed as I turned towards her. I only did it with the some of the guys. At first I thought something was wrong by good it felt. But to answer your other question, I had these feelings for Shikamaru, Choji, Shino, Kiba, Ino, this girl named Ten Ten, and Ayu. I looked into her eyes as she smiled at me. You really think of me in that way, Naruto-kun? She stuttered shyly. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? You cute, friendly, smart, and strong. I rambled. Suddenly she kissed me. This shocked me because I never thought that she was this bold. I kissed her back wrapping my arms around her slender frame and pulled her into my lap. She wrapped her arms around my neck. She pulled back, panting. We gazed into each other's eyes and we knew what we both wanted. Hanada took off her jacket and undershirt, showing her double D size. I stared in lust at her dime-sized nipples, that was hard. I took my shirt off, before I started to suck on both of her nipples gently. She started to moan loudly as she pushed my head further into her titties. I picked her up and carried her to my bed. I placed her on the bed, gently. I stopped sucking on her pink nipples and kissed her on the lips. I trailed my kissing towards her neck, slightly sucking as I went. Naruto. Her voice increased as I found her sweet spot on her neck. I increased my suction on her neck. She gripped my head more as she dry humped into me. I started to kiss my way down her chest, making sure to pay attention to her nipples again. I kissed down her her body until I reached her belly button. I licked around her belly button and in it. I reached her pants and looked up at her for permission. She nodded. I made quick work of removing her pants and panties. Hanada blushed and put her hands of her. There is no reason to ashamed about it, you're down here too. She didn't resist me, when I moved her hand away. Took a breath of her scent. I whispered a softly, beautiful. And licked it softy. Ah, Hanada covered her mouth in embarrassment. Don't worry Haim, I put up privacy seals. You can be as loud as you can. I told her before I started to lick her clit. Na na Naruto kun, she moaned, as I rolled my tongue over her clit and then her lips repeatedly. Ah, she moaned and rolled her hips, when I speared my tongue into her. I began to moan and suck her. She was very wet and I loved her smell and barely hairy. I licked, sucked and swallowed the juices from her. I reached down and started masturbating. I'm gonna. Naruto K U A A A A A H H H H H. She came as she held my head down. I simply gulped down her juice with a smile. I put my to her lips and looked at her. Do it Naruto, she said, panting with determination. 
I grabbed her hips as I slew Ali entered her. We both groaned. Hanada hugged him tightly, making a retreat seemingly impossible. Furthermore, she quivered all around him. Hanada was gasping and clutched my arms, when I slid in further. Hanada, are you okay? Are you hurting? We can stop if you want to. I spurred out. No no continue. I want you to. She struggled out, between breaths. I continued to slide into her until I was completely seated into her. I took a minute to let her breath, before I slid out and back in. We both moaned. Her lips was melting my, and she was almost too tight. Faster Naruto, please. She cried out as pleasure hit her. I picked up speed. I rocked my hips into her. I was humping Hanada like a frenzied beast. I bent over forwards far enough to rest my head on hers. There I was, moaning and drooling as I hammered away at her. Meanwhile, she was moaning into my ear. Feeling as my large cock violating her tender, tight was incredible. My hips was going numb from the powerful assault that I was giving her. Of course, such an intense couldn't last very long. Hanada went first, yelping as fireworks went. Off in her head, her lips tightened up almost painfully, and after another couple strokes, I let it all out inside her. She whimpered as lots of warm semen flooded her colon. We both collapsed and breathed hard after the experience. I kissed her as I slid out. Hanada, do you want to join my harem? I asked. Sure Naruto, she said as she sat up. Laid there for a moment before we got dressed. I told Hanada to hold on to her, as I teleported us to her clan compound. She gave me one last kiss before she entered her house. It was around 7 in the morning before I arrived in the Hokage's office. Sasuke was grumpy, but didn't say anything. Sakura was shyly trying to get his attention. Kakashi was reading my book, My Vampire Lover. It was a drift that was going to publish part of my, Yoai Yoai Paradise, collection. It was apparently good because there was blood running out of Kakashi's mask. Team 7, here is today's set of missions. Sarutobi Siad before he started to list off the requests. Gigi, give us a higher missions or I'll tell Tsunade about your Percy Jutsu. He went pale and grabbed a random C rank scroll. Well I'm, here's your mission. You will protect a bridge builder. Cat bring in Tazuna. The Anbu member left quickly and brung in the man. This is the team that is supposed to guard me. A walking, talking pink highlighter, a human duck, and a pervert. At least the one with the striped face looked reliable. Sakura tried to attack the drunk man but fail when she tripped over her own feet. Proving her uselessness. Sasuke just glared and Kakashi was trying to stop his nose from bleeding. The pink-haired human got up and started to screech about how Sasuke was this and that. I quickly got annoyed and slapped her on the back of her head. She turned around and was about to yell more, but I activated the seal. Everyone was happy about that. All right Team 7, Naruto, I want you in front. With your sensor skills, we will be able to know of any danger that may come toward us. Sasuke, you next. You can back Naruto up with your long range jutsu. Sakura in the middle. This way you can get help from me or Naruto and Sasuke if we run into trouble. Tazuna, stay behind Sakura. I'll be the rear guard as I'm the most experienced, Kakashi ordered us. I already put a seal on Sakura that will only let her speak when it doesn't have any negative feelings behind it. The group got into formation and began traveling towards Wave. They traveled in silence for about 15 minutes. Sakura got a bit antsy and decided to speak up. Tazuna, what's wave like? Sakura asked. Tazuna paused a bit. It's a beautiful country surrounded by crystal waves. The people there are friendly. To me it's paradise, Tazuna said. The males on the team noticed that his voice had several emotions in it. The most prominent were sadness and longing. They passed a puddle. Naruto gave Kakashi a hint by scratching his head. Sasuke made a calming hum and Kakashi nodded and continued ahead. As the group passed the puddle, two ninjas appeared. They charged the group. Tazuna move. Tazuna turned to see Kakashi wrapped around a bladed chain, the ends held by two ninjas. The ninjas pulled and the group watched Kakashi sliced into pieces. The ninjas then charged Tazuna. Sasuke was protecting Sakura while she was screaming, and Naruto charged the two ninjas. He sliced the chain easily and delivered two powerful kicks. The two ninjas landed in a spot that had a seal on it. 
The seals activated and Shikamaru's clan-like shadow was easily restraining the two and draining their chakra. Kakashi came walking out of the bushes. Good job, Naruto, Sasuke. Naruto took all of the valuables from the two, before Kakashi could say anything. Naruto come with me, Tazuna and I are going to have a little talk, Kakashi said. The two went to Tazuna who was shivering from his close encounter with death. Tazuna, Tazuna jumped a little bit. We want to know why two ninjas are trying to kill you, Kakashi said. He drew a kunai from his pack. Don't make me use this. I promise it won't be pleasant if I do. Gato, Tazuna spat out. Naruto was surprised. You mean the Gato, one of the richest people in the world. Tazuna nodded. That damned man wants me dead because of what I'm doing. He sees me as a threat because I'm building a bridge. A bridge, that's why, Kakashi asked perplexed. You have to understand Wave's geography before you understand why Gato fears the bridge. Wave is surrounded by ocean. The only way to end from the island is by boat, Tazuna explained. Ever since Gato's shipping drove everyone else from business, Gato literally controlled Wave. Everyone lives in poverty. Gato's thugs do what they please. The bridge I'm building is large enough to drive Gato out of Wave. If the bridge is completed, then Wave's economy will flourish again. I couldn't afford a B-rank mission so that why I lied and asked for a C-rank. By now, Sasuke and Sakura were back. We looked at Kakashi for orders. Kakashi nodded. Everything made sense. He put the kunai back into his pack. Well let's go back to Konoha. I'm sure. No. Kakashi turned to see Naruto with his arms crossed. Let's complete the mission. I'm not going to just give up on this mission just because it was mislabeled. Anyway. We're ready. We caught you and could have killed you in our genin exam. You're a junin also. I'm sure me and Sasuke is more than ready to go on this mission, Naruto explained. Kakashi turned to Sasuke and Sakura. Do you agree? Sasuke nodded alongside Sakura. It's too troublesome to go back now that we've gone this far. Sasuke said. Kakashi sighed. They were right. Anyway, he needed to go on a mission like this to maintain his skill. Okay. Get back into formation, Kakashi ordered. Naruto grinned and went back in line. Kakashi turned to Tazuna. Once Wave get back on their feet, you will pay for an A-rank mission, understand? Crystal clear sir, Tazuna replied. They walked for several miles. Everyone had their guard up, besides Sakura who was annoying Sasuke. Every once in a while Naruto used his Byakugan. Naruto noticed the wind changed direction and smelled the air. He smelled blood, iron, and sea salt. Naruto threw a kunai into the bushes. The rest watched as they saw Naruto pick up a snow white rabbit, scared to death. A white rabbit, that means it's been raised indoors. Someone used it for a kararimi, Kakashi thought. He heard a deep humming noise coming toward them. Duck. Sasuke pulled Tazuna down just as a huge ass sword missed them. It missed the three genins and stabbed a tree. A large ninja appeared on the sword. Kakashi looked at the ninja recognizing him. Zabuza Momochi, demon of the mist, Kakashi said. Zabuza laughed. I'm honored you know me, Kakashi Hataki of the Sharingan. Everyone just stay back and protect the bridge builder. I'll handle this but I'll have to use my Sharingan. He lifted up his headband showing the red eye. Sakura's eyes widened in surprise while Sasuke was shocked. Why does he have that eye? Oh I get the Sharingan right off the back. I guess this means you won't just give up the bridge builder and be done with it. Sorry but no can do. Kakashi took out a kunai and tightened it in his grip. Though his lower face was covered in bandages they could feel Zabuza smirk. Well looks like I can get some more enjoyment out of this then before I kill you all. Zabuza pulled the sword out of the tree before vanishing from sight. Hidden mist jutsu. As the voice intoned the mist around them thickened rapidly until they had near zero visibility. Pretty soon the mist made it so they couldn't even see Kakashi who was a few meters in front of them. Tazuna was fearing for his life as the genin guarded him. Sasuke's eyes darted around trying to spot any danger. Sakura had worry present in her voice upon feeling the unease. Who is this guy? There are eight points. A chill went down their spine upon hearing Zabuza's voice. Naruto activated his Byakugan eyes before he switched to the Sharingan. He's an A-rank Jonin. Larynx spine, lungs, liver, jugular, subclavian artery, 
kidneys, heart. All ways to kill you. He specializes in both assassination and the execution of multiple targets and is a master of the silent killing technique. Shit the thickening mist is oversensitizing both of my abilities. Naruto thought. Not bad the kid knows his stuff. But how far will that get him? Zabuza leaned over from on top of his head and looked him dead in the eye angry. Naruto heard something and was about to say something when a wave of intense killing intent washed over them. Naruto's body went into a defense pose as the other two genin paled. The lack of sound made it worse when Zabuza suddenly appeared in the middle of them and all they heard was his voice. Getting distracted in the middle of a battle will cost you your life. Moving automatically Naruto pushed Tazuna back and kicked Sakura and Sasuke away. A split second later Zabuza's giant blade tore through his midsection and bisected him. No, Kakashi cried out not getting there fast enough not having anticipated Naruto moving like that. Before the body could fall it destabilized and in a burst let loose a pulse of vibrations and an electric charge that hit Zabuza's blade and went up through his arm. What? Zabuza's arms were stunned to the muscle as his blade shook in his hands with the sword out mid-swing. Before Kurama in her small fox form could fall to the ground a hand reached out and grabbed her around the scruff of her neck before she was pulled back and turned be face to face with Naruto again. A Naruto who was now equating on top of Zabuza's sword. His eyes were half-lidded and slitted as he smirked. Ah oh, that's better. I've had my life be put at risk most of my life. No way killing intent like yours could get to me like that. Compared to the bloodlust of an actual demon you're just a frail imitation. Everyone was not expecting Naruto to avoid death in such a cool way like that. It was simple but worked. The mist had disoriented Naruto's eyes was a raging red. Having used it to dodge and protect his teammates. However he adapted fast and the blast of killing intent let his body recognize the danger he was in and jumpstarted Naruto's instincts. Instincts that Danzo helped hone, by having his Anbu go after him from time to time. They looked closely and could see sparks starting to fly up in the air around Naruto. So his bloodlines is both at least more powerful than a Kekatora. Kakashi didn't have time to think about it right now though as he dashed at Zabuza with his kanai and stabbed him through the chest while Naruto backflipped away. Zabuza's body dissolved into water only for another Zabuza to show up behind Kakashi and decapitate him. That Kakashi then turned into water. Pretty soon both Kakashi and Zabuza had their weapons locked against each other. Kakashi and Zabuza traded blows as they dueled. That kid of yours is actually kind of impressive Kakashi. Yeah he may be reckless but I suppose if he is tasked with proacting the team in my stead then I don't need to worry. We'll see about that. Zabuza suddenly let go of the sword and kicked Kakashi sending him a good distance into the air and to the lake next to them. Kakashi glared as he pulled himself out of the water. Damn it he surprised me. Why is this water so dense? Because it's a trap dumbass. He gasped when Zabuza was already standing on the water behind him. Suiro no jutsu. Water prison technique. Kakashi was submerged in a sphere of water and was quickly rendered of the ability to move. Shit I got sloppy. He 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 you aren't getting out of this one Kakashi. Now for the kitties. He made hand seals with one hand and formed two water clones. Guys don't worry about me. The water clones can only go so far from their caster. Take Tazuna and run. No can do sensei. Naruto walked up to the two Zabuzas with his hands in his pockets. This can't be that hard. One of the Zabuzas scoffed at him. You're a cocky brat huh? Both Zabuzas swung their blades at Naruto's chest and neck only for them to explode into droplets of water. Zabuza I actually have to thank you. Your mist was so dense that it affected my eye's abilities and both diffused and conducted certain properties of my chakra. Thanks to that I am able to finally separate my eye bloodlines and use them both at the same time. So really using water constructs against me wouldn't be the smartest thing right now. Naruto was one who was beginning to be seen as extraordinary in their eyes. Naruto summoned seven chains to grab seven swords while he summoned two more in his hands. Let's dance. Naruto charged at the missing ninja, his chains acting like they had a mind of their own. He attacked like he was Kurama himself, and that made the tailed beast proud. Zubuza barely had any time to block, and was quickly getting trapped. Suddenly Naruto jumped back and gathered chakra into his swords, making them him. Uzumaki style. Nine elements blade slashes. Naruto created chains that was connected to his swords and hands, before he swung all nine chains at Zabuza. There was huge explosion and then dead silence. 
Naruto retracted the swords and was ready. There was a huge crater where Zabuza was kneeling with someone. They both looked beat up. The fighters of Team 7 went to attack but the two enemy nins disappeared. My family's nice and welcoming. Tazuna boasted to them, as they walked along the path. They know I'm supposed to be coming, and they're probably waiting outside. My daughter might have already cooked dinner, and we might have already cooked dinner, and she's a great cook. Naruto had healed Kakashi only a few minutes after he was unconscious from using his implant. The teacher was upset at Sakura's performance, which made the girl apologize profusely to him. He only told her to pay more attention next time, with a barely noticeable hint of anger. After having said this, he had Naruto set him on the couch. What about your wife, and kids? Asked Sakura, sitting next to him. Night had fallen, and they were now gathered closer together. Although Naruto stayed off to the side a little. Tazuna snorted. My wife? He laughed, never had one. My wife died from drowning and I never got over it. He kept drinking, along with Naruto, as the rest of Team 7 stared at him. You had another mirage? Of course not. What gave you that idea? You said you had a family and everything. Sakura mumbled, trying to figure it out. You even said you have a daughter. Doesn't it take two to? She trailed off, blushing a Hanada worthy blush. Tazuna only laughed once more. Tsunami. No, she's adopted. They could see a light near the house, and two shadowy figures walking towards the front of the house, waving. Tazuna ran up to them, hugging the taller one, as the shorter one watched. Tazuna let go of the woman, and Team 7 could now see her. Her clothing looked simple and plain, but that only added to her beauty. She looked to be around 27, near Kakashi's age. She bowed deeply to them, and said, Thank you, for protecting my father. I'm Tsunami, Tazuna's daughter. She bowed deeply once more, as Tazuna scratched the back of his head. Kakashi smiled, which caused Tsunami to blush. The boy beside her just stood there, mouth agape as he stared at the man. Kakashi turned his head to Tazuna, asking, Where was you, and what are the sleeping arrangements? Tazuna just laughed, There's a little orphanage, down by the, he was cut off, as Tsunami pulled her fist back and slammed it into the back of Tazuna's skull. Kakashi's eye widened, as Tazuna came back up, holding a bump on his head. He bowed to Tsunami, saying, sorry, in fear of her strength. He had avoided getting hit by women for many years, but he didn't think he would be able to stop this. It's okay. She winked at him, it's not what the handsome man was talking about. They both laughed, although Tazuna was in embarrassment. Sakura looked at them both in embarrassment, not knowing how to react. Both Sasuke and Naruto were looking at the scene with apathy though Sasuke had a small twinkle of amusement in his eyes. The boy beside Tsunami seethed, as Tazuna recovered. Tsunami, Inari, this is Team 7. He gestured at them, pointing them one at a time as he introduced them. That is their Jonin sensei, Hitaki Kakashi. The blonde-haired boy over there is Uzumaki Naruto. The kid with the duck's ass on his hair is Uchiha Sasuke, and the hairless ape beside them with the unusual hair color is Haruno Sakura. They each bowed in turn, as they were introduced. Why don't we get out of this cold and? You don't know anything about what it's like here. Inari said to them, his voice filled with rage. You don't know what it's like being like this. Inari. Tazuna warned him, looking over the doorway to where he had gone. Tsunami had already gone inside, to probably get dinner. It's nothing like it is here than it is in your stupid ninja village. He yelled at them, picking up a rock from the ground, and throwing it. It hit Sakura, who was all over Sasuke, in the head, thumping against her skull, as it fell to the ground, cracked. The males in Team 7 sighed at her weakness. Before Naruto could speak up, Tazuna beat him to the punch. Inari. Tazuna screamed at him, attracting the attention of Tsunami, who poked her head out of the window to see what was happening. Sasuke looked a little awkward, standing here as the boy yelled at them. Kakashi, Sasuke and Naruto had kept up their cool, and calm shinobi demeanor. Apologize right now. You think you can take on Gato? He'll kill you all, so why do you even bother? He let out a sob, as if remembering something. In Naruto's head, he mentally groaned. It would be wise to get out of this situation, before the boy cried. It was awkward around crying men, or most crying people in general. Good thing he had taught them to control that emotion. You can't just kill him. He's got guards, and everything around him, so why do you even bother? 
You can't kill him. Inari. Naruto said, his voice freezing Inari's words, Our mission here is not to kill Gato. It is to protect your grandfather, to ensure Gato does not kill him. Bullshit. He shouted to him. You don't know anything. Even if your mission isn't to kill Gato, he'll still kill you. Inari. Tazuna screamed at him, slamming his fist into the dining room table. That's enough. His voice was low and dangerous. It seemed like telling off the blonde haired boy struck a nerve in Tazuna, who was still remembering the first time he had seen him. No, Inari said, the voice the same as his grandfather's. He turned to Naruto, pointing a finger at him. You don't what it's like to be poor, having to work for everything you've got. You have no idea the difficulties of having to live like this, having a wave of oppression always hanging over you, keeping you down. Inari looked over his clothes, noting them. Hey! You probably just dress like that to gain sympathy from your ninja village. You're probably really rich, and live a nice, happy life, with no one to care for in this world, and never having to worry about your problems. People like you make me sick. He gathered spit in his mouth, and launched it at Naruto, landing right by his feet. That's when Naruto's parents and Kurama tried to calm Naruto down. Tazuna was about to scream more at Inari, but Naruto cut him off, holding one of his hands out in stop motion. With his other hand, he reached towards his face, pulling off his shirt. Inari froze, staring deep into his chest. His entire face was narrowed in anger, the muscles on his face becoming more defined. Inari started shivering, not because of the cold, but because of the man, looking at him the eyes and body of a real killer. Kakashi ran forward, knowing the extent of the damage Naruto could cause, Keke Jenke or not. Sasuke and Tazuna also ran forward, knowing what Naruto could do. Tsunami were looking confused, but instinctively knew that Inari was in danger. Naruto opened his eyes and had his god's eyes activated. The glare alone made Inari nearly had a heart attack. You have no idea what I've went through in my life. I was hated by the village I piatect for something I have no control over. I've been stabbed, burned, tortured, crucified. The ninja used jutsu, jutsu, on one of their own villager, and that's the sugar-coated version. So don't sit there acting like you have the right to bitch and moan about anything. Naruto yelled with ferocity in his being. Kashina and Minato was trying to calm their child down. Sakura, who woke up while Naruto was yelling, turned to yell at him. Naruto Baka, you haven't been through anything. Stop lying you pathetic demon. Sasuke-kun have it worse than you. She had a smug smile on her bowler monkey face. Naruto turned towards her, and jumped at her. Sasuke and Kakashi, struggled to stop the blonde. Sasuke and Kakashi was hugging him, and secretly kissing his neck and ears, but Naruto was still pissed. He removed himself from his two lovers. I'm going out. Don't follow me. Naruto slammed the door and shattered it to dust. Kakashi and Sasuke turned toward the pink sharpie in disgust. Sakura why in God's perfect heaven would you say that? Sasuke yelled. Sakura flinched a little. Because Sasuke kin he just think he had it worse than you. Sakura stuttered. That's because he did have it worse than Sasuke, Sakura. Kakashi yelled, throwing his arms in the air in an air ing kidding me motion. Sensei. Sasuke he's obvious trying to brainwash you both into thinking that. He just jealous cause you belong to me Sasuke, and he can never have me. Sakura stuttered with more confidence. Bitch, are you dumb? Both yelled at the pink bowler monkey and a poor street cat mixture. For one, Saku whore. I never liked you. For two, I don't belong to anyone besides someone I won't mention. And finally, you are the ugliest thing alive. I would choose Ino or Hinata over you. Sasuke started to walk away but Sakura jumped at him to hug him. Sasuke turned around, pushed her onto the floor, and left. Sakura, I'm taking you off of the team when we get back to Konoha, the council be damned. You have no ninja skills or smarts. If Zabuza came back and killed you, I would hug him and celebrate. I'm going to inform the Hokage of this whole account and see what he wants done. Kakashi said as he walked over her and up the stairs. Tazuna just shook his head and drunk his alcohol. Tsunami had already went upstairs and went to comfort Inari. Naruto was still taking out his anger onto the poor trees. He made his most powerful and destructive jutsu for a war ever. The flashing spiraling barrage. He used his father Jutsu to quickly flash to multiple places and throw multiple Rasengans with every element and sub-elements at his enemy. He could pull of 20 of these before he would be extremely tired. 
This only thing is. The total time the just last is 30 minutes total each time. It wasn't long before he passed out. Haku walked through the destroyed forest in worry. It looked like a barren wasteland. He walked around looking for anywhere that had herbs. He stumbled upon a sleeping Naruto, with a raging boner. Haku couldn't help but pop one too, and get wet. Haku them remembered the war zone around him. He bent down to wake up Naruto, but quickly found himself under Naruto with his hand pinned over his head. Hello Hunter Nin. Naruto whispered, with a husky voice in Haku's ear. Haku couldn't help but moan from that. How did you know? Haku cussed at himself for stuttering, and pressed his legs together. Well, for one, you have the body shape of the Hunter Nin. Second, you sound just like him. Finally, you have the same chakra signature. Naruto said while looking over Haku. What are you going to do to me? Haku asked, slightly scared. Well, I could let you go, or we can take care of your little friend down here. Naruto said before grabbing Haku's through his clothes, getting a moan from him. So what do you say? Naruto asked him. Haku shook his head yes, before he found himself and Naruto naked. Haley covered his private parts, embarrassed by Naruto's roaming eyes. Naruto took Haku's hands away, and was in awe. Naruto had never seen a hermaphrodite before, let alone what to call them. But Naruto didn't look away, he smiled. You look beautiful Haku-san, Naruto said before licking Haku's lips and up his. Haku's instantly moaned. Naruto smirked and continued his licking. Na na Naruto-kun, Haku moaned, as he rolled his tongue around her head. Naruto and then down her shaft and onto her lips repeatedly. Ah. He moaned and rolled her hips, when the male speared his tongue into her. Naruto began to moan and suck her. She was very wet and he loved her taste. He licked, sucked and swallowed the juices from her. Naruto reached down and started fingering Haku's hole. Naruto noticed Haku's lack of a hymen. Is this your first time? He asked, NKT knowing if people of her type had hymens or not. Nozabuza master took mine if fear of me ever being raped. Haku barely finished the sentence. Well at least it won't hurt as much. Naruto said, before he entered her vagina and bottomed out. I'm gonna. Naruto K-U-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-H-H-H-H-H. She came as she held Naruto's head down to her chest. He sucked her nipples, causing Haku to jerk and a little more. Do it Naruto. She said, panting with determination. Naruto grabbed her hips, and slew Aoli pulled out and then trusted into her. Both groaned. Haku hugged him tightly, because she never had someone the size and girth of Naruto in her. Naruto groaned. Haku may not have been a virgin, but she felt tight as hell. Furthermore, she quivered all around him. Haku couldn't believe the places he touched. She could never go back to Zabuza. Haku struggled to keep his voice down and breathe as Naruto continued to slide into her. Naruto took a minute to let her breath, before I sliding out and switching positions. He thrashed back in. We both moaned. Her lips was a warm vice around his, and she was almost too tight. Faster Naruto, please. She cried out as pleasure hit her. He picked up speed and rocked his hips into her. Naruto bent over forwards far enough to rest my head on hers. There he was, moaning and drooling as he went into her womb. Haku went first, yelping as fireworks went off in every cell in her body. Her lips tightened up almost painfully, and after another couple strokes, Haku came again, painting the ground below her. Naruto let it all out inside her. She whimpered as a flooded her. They both collapsed and breathed hard. Haku, will you join us? Was truly a beautiful thing. It truly was. But Zabuza's role in Hank's life was better. Haku did say he. That's the pronoun he let Naruto use. Will try to reason with Zabuza, but cannot promise anything. Naruto just hugged Haku one more time, before he let Haku go. Although he was sad that Haku didn't join his harem, he was a little happy to now have a better use to his newly gained and upgraded ice release. After all, Haku did give him a lot of DNA. His parents and Kurama upgraded it to the point that he can easily freeze the wind country, lightning country, and fire country in his sleep. He sighed before speaking, you know you could have taken a picture, it would have lasted longer. Naruto looked into the trees at the two figures, as they jumped down from their hiding spot. Impressive, you actually sensed us, one side of the venue fly trap dude said. What do you want? Naruto asked, as he slowly walked backwards towards the lake. Toby just wanted to talk to pervert. 
The orange swirl dude said. Naruto felt offended by that statement. Sorry dude, if anyone's a pervert, it's you too. Like who watches someone sleep and have sex when said person wakes up? Naruto asked. Naruto had reached the water by that point. What did you say to say to Toby? Toby will fight you. Toby charged at Naruto but the weird plant thingy grabbed his cape. Anyways, come quietly with this Naruto Uzumaki. Or be taken. Your choice. The black part said. Toby quieted down and just huffed. Okay. Naruto said and was grabbed by Toby. Can I just say one thing though? The blonde son asked. What? Said the masked figure. Seal. Naruto said with a checkmate grin on his face. See. Toby said before he was sealed in Naruto's arm. The plant thing tried to get away, but Naruto froze the whole landscape with help from the nearby lake. Zero. The plant thing tried to fight but Naruto used his midnight ability to its fullest. Stop, and submit to your master. Naruto blue sapphires glowed. Yes master. Both parts said as they bowed to Naruto. Good my little pet, now you will go back to whoever, or whatever organization, assigned you this task and collect every bloodline and all the information about them and deliver it to me next week. Am I clear? Naruto demanded as he stared into Zetsu's unique eyes. Yes master. Zesti said still on his their knees. Now go. Zetsu left and Naruto fixed the landscape. Maybe all him or them. I wonder if they can separate. Ooh if they, I want them to go down on each other before I them. Oh it must be time to get back. Must not keep my lovers waiting. Naruto thought before he left the pond. Naruto, I'm sorry about last night. Tsunami said as he sat down for breakfast. Tazuna was passed out in his drunken state, and Inari was walking down the stairs. It's no problem, I could see how he felt in his eyes last night. He said as he put some food on his plate. Can you go get the boys for me? The woman asked as she bring out some drinks for the meal. Naruto walked up the stairs into the room he was sharing. What he found was Sasuke getting pounded by five Kakashis, and Kakashi getting split roasted by Sasuke clones. He took a picture and left, although he wanted to join the fray. He walked back downstairs and made up with Inari and drunk with the now woke Tizuna. After ten minutes, the pair walked downstairs as if nothing happened. Naruto Pav. Good morning Naruto, I'm glad you're safe. Sasuke said as he ate his breakfast. Good morning Sasuke, Kakashi, and thanks for worrying about me. No problem Kakashi as he read Yaoi Yaoi Escape, another book in my series. So Zabuza will take a few days to heal, so Ihatbare we going to do? Naruto asked as he finished eating. Well, we're going to train until then. Kakashi said. Kakashi you can train Sasuke some more, I'll start training Inari, if that's okay with you Tsunami-chan? Naruto asked her. Just make sure not to hurt him, please, she said as she started to gather up the dishes. Yeah. I am going to get trained by Naru Koi, ones I said before he blushed and turned away. Wow, Kit. Oh didn't know your charm worked on Shota's. Karama said. I wasn't using my ability. And when did y'all get back? I asked her. I got back just now. Kashina and Minato Baka still making preparations for after the Chunin exams. She mumbled and started to snore. I just smiled fondly, before I zoned back into the outside world. Okay so it's settled. Let's go everyone, Kakashi said as we started to head out. Once we got to the clearing, I turned towards Inari. So Inari, in order to teach you everything you need in a shorter time, I am going to use a jutsu to make it look like we spent a year together, but really we just used the time it took for a fight in Dragon Ball Z to finish. I said. So basically two to three hours of binge watching with commercials. Inari said. Yep. But just beware, you don't age, you will feel the difference in the air and you will never be able to die by normal means. I said. Okay let's start. I laughed at Inari's enthusiasm, if he only knew. Time dilation jutsu. I said as a dome appeared an acre around us. Welcome to hell Inari. I said as I laughed like a clinically insane person. Karama was so proud. So I spent the year, training Inari in Nin, Tai, Gen, Kenjutsus and infiltration and tracking. And he was surprisingly good at subduction but I am the king at subduction. Hey I do have a age limit to the sexual age. He was one stubborn year old, though. The jutsu ended and Inari was just experimenting on a jutsu he was creating. He was trying to make a jutsu that can stop time. I even warned him about the dangers. Fire Earth Style. 
Multi Grenades Jutsu. I yelled as I aimed the jutsu at the eight-year-old. Time stop jutsu. Inari yelled as my attack stopped. Everything stopped besides me, beside me because I have an anti-space and time barrier seal on me. Inari looked like he aged about a few years to my age. Good job Inari, but there are only one way to beat this jutsu. One to have this seal I have on me. But there is even greater risk of dying if you use this jutsu. That jutsu is easily a forbidden jutsu. So promise me you will only do his if you have no other options. I lectured him. Ya yeah, Naruto Koi, he said. I just sighed. Come on kid let go explain this to your mother. Let's hope she won't be furious with me. Hey I'm at least you're around your age now. Inari whined. But you still whine like an eight year old. I chuckled before running towards the house, with him chasing me. It was three days since I trained Inari. I was showering. Tazuna building his bridge while Kakashi and Sasuke was still watching him. Inari was in town getting groceries AMD other stuff. I got out of the shower and there was glass shattering downstairs. I didn't even put on clothes as I teleported downstairs. Tsunami was getting manhandled by three bandits. One had a standard sword, one had two machetes, and one was a brute. I quickly broke the brute's neck, and kicked the machete dude in his throat. He fell to the ground heaving. The last one charged at me, but I triped him. He fell on his sword, getting pierced through his head. Who the heel trained the idiot? I just shook my head, as I tied the only one alive up. My clones cleaned up the dead bodies and was helping in calming down Tsunami. Did Gato send you? I asked. I'll never tell you s. He spat on my shoe. I bitch slapped him, making him loose so teeth. Tell me or I'll castrate you. I demanded as I pulled out a kanai. You're bluffing. He stuttered. I sighed as I took off his pants. He was hard and leaking, and was a respectable size. But I wasn't here for sex. I put the kanai at his base. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you everything you want. He yelled frightened. I pulled up his pants and he told me everything. I stabbed him through the head and burned down the tree. Inari arrived and I told him to gather the civilians and protect them. We both divided and concurred. I teleported to Kakashi's location. I kicked Zabuza in the face. Haku was sitting on the sidelines and Sasuke was guarding Tazuna. Did you miss me? I asked as I unsealed one of my many swords. Zabuza just glared me and charged at me. Kakashi blocked the attack for me. Go help Sasuke protect Tazuna. I got this. Kashi said and he and Zabuza fought. I nodded my head and was by Sasuke. I asked if Haku want to spar and he agreed. I gave him one of my swords, and used my gauntlets. We locked in a play fight, when Kakashi had summoned his ninja hounds and held Zabuza down. Haku saw this and went to protect him. I went after Haku. We reached them as Kakashi was going to pierce Zabuza with his lightning blade. Haku jumped in front of Kakashi, and I felt an extreme need to protect. It happened all in a split second. I was holding Haku, then we was one but not at the same time. It felt as if we was was awake but not. Pova Naruto no Haku. Wait I opened my eyes. I pushed Kakashi's hand away and kicked him back with a kick. I formed hand signs no one seen before. Eternal winter style, winter's hold. A barrier made up of obsidian strong ice came around Zabuza, keeping him protected. Suddenly laughter filled the bridge as a very short person walked onto it with an army of thugs. Demon of the mist. Ha. Huh. More like baby of the mist. He said. Kakashi was still weak from the kick and Zabuza was still in the barrier. Well kill everyone here. Also to anyone who brings me the stunning brown haired beauty, will get a bonus as well. I felt anger swell in me, like a mother who will protect her children. I took the sword that Haku used in Naruto's gauntlets and formed a new weapon. I held the two story hammer protectively. The thugs charged at us. I added chakra to my hammer and slammed in into the ground causing a tremor that sunned a lot of thugs flying. I added ice chakra into the hammer and swung around in a circle. When the hammer made contact with a thug, he would instantly froze but shattered as the hammer's force would continue on its path. I saw Gato I trying to leave. I charged the hammer once more with chakra. Hammer style. Valley of the storm. I slammed the hammer into the ground. The ground gave away as the force continued all the way towards Gato. Thugs, left and right fell into the valley into Gato fell in. I held my hammer in one hand and did a few hand signs. Eternal winter style. Epic winter storm. I my smooth, 
Silky voice called out. Instantly, it started to hail and snow into the valley. Until it was filled. Anyone else wanna piss off this wolf? I asked as I raised my hammer. They instantly fled the scene. I turned towards Sasuke, Kakashi, and Zabuza, and made my way towards them. They readied their weapons. Are you friend or foe? Kakashi asked. I laughed full-heartedly. Silly Kakakun. Of course I'm a friend. He still didn't lower his weapon. What's your name and what happened to Haku? Zabuza asked. My eyes widened from realization. I gasped in Sapara it has been two weeks since the formation of winter. I asked Kurama about it. All she had said is that I had somehow activated a lost clan ability that predates the warring clan era. I still remember the way I felt when we was winter. All the constant sexual pleasure. It was thrilling, and it had me wanting to do it again. But at the same time, I didn't. Because I couldn't get the thought of if I fuse with someone like Sakura, would I feel the same? That scared the hell out of me. I do not want to have sex with that thing ever. The other things that happened was that Zabuza went towards Uzu to meet up with my parents, while Haku joined me in Konoha. She lived with me in the Uzumaki estate. We unsealed Sakura and I placed a seal on her so she won't speak her oversized mouth. We took a week off after we got back to prepaid for the Chunin exam and get extra material. I still trained with Tsunade and her apprentice, and I was pretty close to be a medic master. Tsunade even said that I could be better than her if I keep doing what I do best by time the Chunin exams are over. Third Pav. Naruto walked into the academy first floor with a great stride, his teammates behind him. They quickly made it into room 2B, only to see a large group of genins. Sasuke and Naruto knew that it was a genjutsu instantly, Sakura was drooling over Sasuke. Naruto and Sasuke shared a look and then sneaked past the two gate watchers. When they was on their way up the stairs, they was stopped by a boy named Rock Lee. Are you Sasuke Uchiha? Lee asked. Sasuke looked weirded out by the green jumpsuit that Lee was wearing, but nodded anyways. I challenge you, Lee shouted. Sasuke looked at Naruto who shook his head no, then said no. Team 7 turned around to leave. Not even a second later, Naruto moved and grabbed Lee's leg. Naruto used his midnight ability to make Lee follow his command, and to fall for him. Naruto threw Lee across the room and left. They made their way onto the third floor where Kakashi was waiting on them. After a quick chat, Sasuke and Sakura entered the room. Naruto turned to Kakashi and kissed him. See you after the second exam, sensei. Before he turned around and entered the room. Haters number one, haters number two, and haters number three. Naruto said as he walked around the room. He randomly circled a ground of genins in the room, turning as he said that. Naruto gave zero s, about their opinions. Ugh, I forgot how ugly some people are from other nations. Naruto continued as he thrown some hair out of his face. Some people didn't like his call out, so they flared their key at him. That made Naruto walk closer to them, with his arms out. Oh, what's up? You wanna fight? Come get some then, bitch. You can't whoop me, Naruto said as his hit his chest with both hands. I thought so, ya all cabbages. He threw his hair around in one sound genin face. That genin, was plotting ways to get back at the blonde boy. Naruto smirked because his trash talk no jutsu worked. He made his way to his teammates. Naruto, you baka, now they're gonna be targeting us. Sakura said. Naruto simply looked at her as if she had Akamaru's shit on her. What is it dead last? Sakura continued. Naruto slapped a silencer seal with a paralyzed seal that need more chakra than the last to activate on her humongous forehead. Sakura tried to let out her streaks but couldn't. She then rushed at him but was quickly stopped by the other seal, not that anyone else knew. Sasuke continued his act of superiority, by looking like he was seething. So everybody made it into the exams too, huh? No worries, he'll still kick Sasuke's ass. Kiba said cocky. Hello Naruto-kun, Hanada said with no stutter. Naruto wondered if the sex he had with Hanada in the chapter before the wave arc he means last month helped. Shino gave a quick wave to Naruto as he stood quietly, looking around the room. Sasuke-kun. Ino yelled as she hit floor, because Sasuke dodged her. What a drag, you guys are here too. Shikamaru asked. 
Choji ate his special chips after a quick hello. You know you should be quiet, especially the blonde boy. Kabuto said as he walked up to the group of rookies. Who are you? Kiba shouted. I am Kabuto, Kabuto said before I interrupted him. Okay, we get it, you're basically a nobody, can you leave, your literal and metaphorical snake smell is trying to interact with my realness. I asked, you're welcome, I smiled and turned towards Sasuke to ask him about his new training routine. Well anyways I got info cards about everyone here, Kabuto tempted but I once again interrupted. Ooh so you really are a snake, I mocked. I guess I really was right about you, snitch. You really don't have a purpose in life. You're welcome, I said. This had most of the contestants snickering. Kabuto went red in the face and yelled. Well I guess you don't want the, will you get it through your pea-sized brain? We don't care about your under the sea dildo collection. That you dragged out of the Atlantic. You fishy bitch. I played into him. He lunged at me but missed. I kicked his head through the wall and all the way into Hokage's building. I dusted my hands as Ibiki walked in. All right everyone, calm down. Or get disqualified, he demanded as he scanned the room. Once he saw me, he sighed and walked back out. It will be a few more minutes before the first exams start. He said before the door closed. I turned towards Sasuke and gave him a signal. He caught it and sliped the rest of the harem family the answers, instructions for the next two exams, how to act during, and how to pack doing so. Two. 5, 8, 15, 18. I whispered to each of them a different number. They each took out their paper at the interval I gave them and nodded. At that moment, Ibiki walked back in with six Anbu dressed like Chunins and a lot of Chunin behind him. Kabuto's teammates come forward, these two here will guide you to your teammate that is in the hospital. Sant worry, you're not disqualified. As for the rest of you, I'll write the rules on the desk and give you these packets but don't start yet. Ibiki said as the Chunin passed out the paper and he wrote the rules on the board. People was shouting in disbelief. Now that everyone got a packet, start. Ibiki cut them off and yelled. I quickly wrote the answers onto the paper and wrote a coded message for him and Anko on the back in chakra. And slept the rest of the exams. I needed to talk to Kurama anyways. I appeared in my mindscape. Kurama was lounging in her cave, reading a Wattpad fanfiction. What are you reading now? I asked the humongous fox. I'm reading a fanfiction of an anime show. It about the one anime show that I told you about. She said, still reading her phone. Are you talking about the anime show, where the created was making one curator life revolve around find another character, that the author obviously favored, and gave all the cool power-ups to, and not give the character at least his mother's bloodline. And where the female character that was useless for 300 episodes and then suddenly become useful in the second edition of the show, in all reality that the creator wanted to kill her off on her first mission, but couldn't put together a plot if he did that. I asked, that one, she said as her tails flicked back and towards randomly. Say, Kurama, I asked, hum, she asked, can we start sage mode training? I going to need it in the next exam, if the king cobra makes his move then. I explained. She nodded her head and then slammed one of her tail on my head. I astro projected into a forest. The scenery was like old Disney and crack was having an orgy with every drug in the world. There was foxes of all kind running around, resting, or just sitting around. Suddenly a large paw was about to crush me. I dodged. Why are you here human? A dominated voice asked. It came from the large fox. Kurama don't me here for sage training. I told her, well if you're here for that, then you should find a way to make me summit within three weeks. If you cannot, then you're not worthy of Kurama's praise. The large fox mocked before she transformed into a five inches six tall brown haired woman, with purple eyes and the size of Anko. Well let's get started, she said. Before she could move, I restrained her with my chakra chains. What? How? Let me go this minute, you filthy human. She yelled. Now. Now Vixen Chan, after the way you disrespected Kurama's choice of people and glared at me, I should punish you. I said as a chain rubbed against her woman and, she tried to hold back her moans. I walked up to her and rubbed her wet. We just started and you're this wet. How embarrassing for a leader. I taunted. She whimpered and got wetter. You will get punished when you let me go, Pesk. She let out the empty threat. So you do have some fight left in you, huh? 
I smacked her ass. She let out a moan and blushed. So you're a pain pleasure lover. So good to know. I smacked her bubble butt again, and it bounced. I begin to massage her nipples as I scatched my nails up and down her sides gently. My chains was still moving between her lips and rubbing her. She was a moaning mess. Please, human, she asked as I smacked her ass some more. What was that, hum? I teased. This was so hot. To have an actual leader of a group at your disposal. That made my hard. I pulled it out and made her kneel. Summit. I demanded. She still resisted. I rubbed her clit and pinched her hard nipples as she began to thrash against the chains in pleasure. Please, human. She pleased. Please what? I can't grant your wish if I don't tell me. I said as I rubbed my across her face. She took a good whiff of my musk and moaned. Please me like a jackrabbit. Make me yours. Turn me into your personal cock sleeve, I don't care. Just stick your in my and destroy me. She cried as I keep bringing her close to release and stopping. I will if you do one thing for me. I said, anything, she said before she begin to suck my to the base. Sum it to me, I told her. She pulled off my hard. Spit and pre was all over her chin. I I sum it to you. She said, I released the chains. She fell to the ground and raised her ass in the air. She bargained to finger herself. Are you ready? I asked her as I got behind her, my touching her entrance. Yes human Sama, she moaned like a bitch in heat. Vixen Chan, guess what? I told her, what? She asked as she grounded her was against my member. Kai, I said. The genjutsu released and she realized what happened. I looked at her from my spot in the shade. Everyone was looking at her. The fox lady blushed, but got angry. So are we going to start my sage training? I asked smirking. She smiled sweetly. Sure, we can start now. Oh shit. Now will everyone go up to the balcony except for Tamari and Ten Ten? Said Hayate as everyone except for the contestants walked up to the balcony. All right the first match is between Tamari and Ten Ten. Said Hayate. Ready. Begin. Said Hayate. Cute. It seems you're not totally weak as the rest of the leaf girls. Asked Tamari. Or was that just a front? I guess that means you're about on the same level as her. Pathetic. Remark pointed at Sakura, who was practically dry raping Sasuke. Don't judge me until the fight's over, said Ten Ten, taking a stance. Tamari left herself wide open. Fair enough. I'll give you three free attacks. Tented ran at the Suna bin, taking out two scrolls. Roaring dragon. Level one fangs. She weapon mistress yelled. She flung the scrolls open at the fan user, and thousands of kanais came out of the seals. Tamari smiled. Wind style. Wind barrage. Remark swung her fan and repelled the kanais towards Ten Ten. With great show of flexibility, the owner of the kanais whipped and weaved around the knives. Ten Ten took out some more scrolls, now closer in rang of Tamari. Enrolling the scrolls, the female yelled another jutsu. Twin roaring dragon. Level 1 fangs. Ten Ten took out some more scrolls, now closer in rang of Tamari. Enrolling the scrolls, the female yelled another jutsu. Twin Roaring Dragon. Level 2 Dragon's Might. This time Kanai's, Ninja Stars, and Fire came from the seals at the Wind User. Tamari swung her giant fan that's showing two purple dots now. Wind Style. Great Breakthrough. A great force of wind came from the fan. Ten Ten was thrown across the battlefield burned with kanai scrapes on her. Ha, that's all you leaf lickers got. I am not even sweat. Tamari mocked, leaning on beer now closed fan. Tenten got up and took out a few scrolls. Earth clone jutsu. Ten Ten yelled. Three clones appeared and grabbed a scroll. The clones then ran around Tamari, until there was a Ten Ten at each corner. Tamari grabbed her fan and ran at the real one, but Ten Ten released her attack. Scroll style. Four giant diester. All the ten ten released a great flood of lightning, surging daggers, kanai, shooting stars, and knives. Tamari swung her fan at the ground and L knocked herself into the air, avoiding the rain of attack. She repeatedly blew herself higher and higher into the air, then made the finishing move. Wind style. Roar of a god. A supersonic coated wind hit the arena with a devastating blast. There was dust and rocks flying everywhere. When the cloud cleared, Everyone can see Tamari floating down softly. Ten Ten was defeated with large amount of weapons in her. 
What the? asked Ino, surprised. Winner. Tamari. Said Hayate as the medics took 10 10 to the infirmary. Next match is Gara versus Rock Lee. Said Hayate as the two came down to the ring. Ready. Begin. Gara saw a signal from Naruto that said to subdue, not kill. Gara used a yawn as his answer. Like brown on dirt, Lee was in Gara's guard. Lee kicked Gara in the air and jumped. Leaf hurricane. Lee yelled and kicked Gara, but Gara substituted with a knockout gas bomb. The bomb exploded and sprayed all over Lee who dropped to the ground in surprise. Gara sent his sand to lock onto Lee's limbs, but the green jumpsuit wearing boy dodged each attempt that Gara made. Everyone can see that the sleep gas was working, but damn that boy was a super soldier. Lee jumped onto the wall and launched at the red head, and punched him in his face. The tatted boy crashed into the wall and fell to the ground into a clump of earth. Gara appeared behind Lee with another bomb already lit. Lee turned around and kicked Gara away but it was a sound clone. It stunned Lee enough for the bomb to go off, and cover Lee in a thin liquid. The liquid started to dry as Lee stumbled and threw up. Gara saw the boy stand up, made reinforced dome of sand around him. Lee, use the gates. Guy yelled and Naruto laughed. Guy heard this and turned to the blonde. What's so funny, young youthful boy? The older male asked, even if Lee used the gates, he will not be able to go past the second gate, before the sleeping gas and paralyzing liquid stop him dead in his tracks. I should know, used it on Itachi when I was little and wanted to escape the villagers for ramen. Sasuke perked up at this information, and was enraged. How did that sand nin get a hold of it? Kurinai asked. Well, Kurinai, I gave him some cause he asked for some a few days ago in the training ground within this building. That's Kurinai sensei to you Jenin Uzumaki. And, Kurinai shouted. Oh please it's Kurinai, we all know that you used Asuma's connection to the old man as a gateway into Jonin. You're barely B rank in the bingo book. Ya gold digging, slut. Everyone was appalled at what Naruto said. Anko laughed and so did Ibiki, Hiba, Shikamaru, and Choji. Kurama went to hit the blonde, but Kakashi teleported out with her. That was very untruthful, Naruto. Giving your enemy a weapon against you, and talking back to your sensei. Guy said, look guy, you look like a good guy, pun intended, but she is not my sensei. Plus she tried me like you would try wine. And I wasn't having that. I said to the bowl cut male. Well can we talk about this and some other things after this? Guy asked sensually, sure. Kakashi came back with his shirt ruffled. Did this bitch try to touch what's mine? Oh, hell no. Kurinai came back with her clothes a little out of place. Everybody saw me take off my headband and my kanai pouch. I threw it to Kiba with a, hold this, look. Naruro what are you doing? Kakashi asked me as he saw me tying my boots. I'm about to that bitch up for try to sleep with what's mine. I answered as I made sure I was comfortable in my clothings. Naruto it very untruthful of a male to strike a female. Guy lectured, well it a good thing I can do this. I told them as I turned into Naruko and used a hairband to tie my hair up. What? Everybody screamed as they saw how beautiful I was. I looked better than Mei, Tsunade, and Karana put together. I walked up to the bitch and put my finger in her face. Bitch you got five mother ing seconds to prepare your will, before I beat the out of you. I demanded her as I gave a glare that rivals my mother's and Kura-chan put together. Look, whore, you're just a genin. No matter how you look, I can easily knock you down. Kurinai said. Winner. Gara. Nobody of the arena cared. Next match is Neji versus Hanada, but that will be after a 30 minute break, said Hayate. Say that again, bitch. Say it again, call me a whore one more time bitch. I got in her face and shoving her with my chest. She looked like she was going to do something. I know what you tried to do to Hinata and Kiba. You nasty Orochimaru acting bitch. I yelled as she started to get into my face too. Why you little skitch. Do something. Do something. I ing dare you on all nine of the Kaibu's tails. I ing dare you. Your face will be a permanent addition to thus floor. Asuma and some other guys was trying to walk forward and stop us, but stopped at, R, he. Ready, begin, said Hayate as Kiba ran at him. And the stupid, dumb, monkey mouth, mothering bitch hit me. 
Shi Ying hit me, so punched her in her jaw and grabbed her hair. As did she, and I started to hit her all all across her head and pull on her. She slipped and fell on the floor, and I continued to hit her as I pulled her across the floor. She tripped me and got on top of me and started choking me. This time Anbu showed up and was approaching us. I punched her with full Karama chakra in my hand. Because you know, Karama wasn't just mad, she was super mad. Aunt Flo was in town for the both of us. And Karama didn't like the bitch in the first place. So she gladly lent me her chakra. Kurinai flew through the roof, and I launched through the roof after her. I got into the Goken stance as Kurinai ran at me. Kurinai threw many punches and kicks at me, but I easily dodged and blocked them. Kurinai got angry and sent a kick at my face, which I caught. I swept Kurinai's left foot off the ground and sent a roundhouse kick that was augmented by chakra at her side. She was sent her flying into the wall of the stairs. Kurinai, however, got up looking very angry. There was a group of people around us watching. She took out a sword, and launched at me. So I pulled out two short scythes that I connected with a rope of chakra. She slashed at my left arm, but I dodged and cut her on her face. I jumped back and started making an air seal. Blood owner paralysis seal, I said, as I launched a scythe past her turkey neck. I pulled the scythe back, and it wrapped around her neck. I appeared in front of her, with both blades at her jugular. She broke the seal, and head butted me. She sliced the chakra binding her, and I started hand signs. I requited my hula hooped weapons and ran at her fast. Dark nightmare encasement, cosmic style, deadly orbit. Kurama dispelled the genjutsu as it affected me, but I still stuck Kurinai anyways. I struck her once, turned around and hit her again, as dark fire mist came off my weapons. I turned full around with my other arm, into a uppercut and made a beam of the dark fire shoot from the ground, up into the sky, capturing her. She fell down and struggled to get up. Asuma dumb ass kicks me into my stomach and helps her up. I rolled off of the building, catching myself with my hand. Kakashi, Sasuke, Kiba runs to help me up. All right everyone enough, the thrid Hokage said with a demanding tone. Kurinai, you have crossed a line with hitting a genin out of the sensei student way, you have used a high level genjutsu against a genin, attacked with the intent to kill a genin with a sword, you have touched your tennis inappropriately, allegedly, and slandered another member of our village troops. What do you have to say for yourself? Lord Hokage I can explain, she stuttered out. Shut up. I don't want to hear it. You're now on D rank missions until further notice. As for you, Naruto. The third was cut off by my mom and dad appearing in front of me. Baby, are you alright? Kurama let us know what happened. Come to Uzu. It's already completed now. Christina and Minato ranted. Everyone was flabbergasted that two heroes and one Hokage was alive. Not only that, that they was my parents. Naruto Uzumaki of the Hidden Leaf. Do not go with these unknown ninjas or you will be cast out as a missing nin and besides I own you. As you are the nine-tailed Akcheksujidi. He started to choke as the seal on his arm started to activate. I used shadow clones to gather my entire crew together, and left Viva the Thunder God Jutsu. I also left a gifted the side of an disaster. Time to execute the plan, a special flower. Interviewer, so what happened after you left the leaf? Naruto. I left the village with my parents, and lovers towards the old Akatsuki base. But not all things is plan. When I teleported, I kinda glitched and we are currently all scattered across the land. Interviewer. So what do you mean glitched? Naruto. Well I say glitch, because I never teleported more than three or four people. So when I teleported everyone by everyone I mean my harem family, I kinda, sorta flashed across the whole continent. Interviewer. So your son completed a feat that you have not, how does make you feel? Minato. Well I I I feel totally great about it. Why do I feel like Kashina is here, at the Hidden Sand Village? Interviewer. So Kashina where did you end up at? Kashina. I ended up at the Valley of the End, with the lovely. I can honestly say, the whole I'm shy bullshit act is quickly annoying me. Maybe I shall take her under my wing, and show her number 63 the spread eagle. Interviewer. So Naruto what's the plan for reuniting? Naruto. Well I placed tracker seals on everybody before we left, 
and I sent some of my fox summons to assist them finding each other. Interviewer. How did you take it, when the fox, Naruto sent, came to you in Kumo? Kiba. Well I was shocked, initially, when a green three-tailed fox appeared in front of me. Cause what the hell is a fox doing on a mountain, this high? I totally didn't piss myself. Shino. Kiba totally did piss it himself. I had to stop the fool from falling of the side of the mountain. Interviewer. So Kurama, how do you like your current host? Kurama. I like the brat. Naruto. I'm not a brat thumps. Kurama. As I was saying, I like the brat quite a lot. But not when he does shit like interrupt me. I swear he's just like his dimwitted father. But more refreshing to talk to him, than a drunk son Goku and Shikaku. Interviewer. Where did land? Kakashi. We landed in Odogakur, their hot springs to be exact. I landed on the male side, and Aruka landed on the girl's side. I didn't see any sexy girls at all. After a scream, and Aruka jumping over the side wall, we joined up together, and hid in an abandoned building close to the outskirts. Aruka. Kakashi landed on the girl's side of the hot springs. More like he landed on some foul mouth genin from the sound 4. His head was between her breasts too. Now I have some sort of blackmail material on him. Chuckles darkly. Interviewer. So Sasuke, where did you end up? Sasuke. I ended up in the stone village. I landed in the hospital. There they looked after me, before they let me out. Interviewer. So Hanada, what do you think of Kashina? Hanada. I think Kashina sensei is amazing. She helped me get over my stutter. Unfortunately, I can't sleep no more don't ask. Third pick. Scene 1. Hanada woke up. After Kashina shook her a lot, Hanada jumped back in fright, and settled into the rental fist stance. Until she saw Kashina laugh. Oh 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 la la lady ku kushina, I it's you. Hanada said as she relaxed. N n n n, nope. That is not gonna work. Kashina said, as she crossed her arms and tapped her face with a finger. Wa what's na nots hap pp pen ening? Hanada asked, not knowing her fate was sealed. Kashina just smiled in false happiness. Oh nothing, dear, we should set up camp here. It's almost dark, we'll find the other tonight. Kishina unsealed two tents, and some camping materials. Oh okay, Hanada said as she also began unpacking a tent. Hey Hanada, can you hand me that hammer besides you? Kashina asked her. Sir sure. Hanada turned to her left and grabbed a hammer. When she turned around, her heart nearly broke through her chest. She had turned around and seen a 150 tall vintage clown. Its sharp teeth was smiling with water smeared, and its glowing red eyes had an endless void in them. It was so close, that Hanada can smell its raw catfish, baby poop, and stale air all put together. Its hammer was just a tall, with ancient runes put in it. The clown swung the hammer downwards. Hanada could feel her life flashed across her eyes. She closed her eyes, waiting on her death. But when she heard Kashina's laughter, she was dumbfounded. Are you crazy? You almost gave me a race of a heart attack. Hanada screamed at the red-headed mother. This made Kashina laugh even harder. She laughed so harm, she passed out due to lack of air. Hanada sweat dropped. Scene 2. An hour later Kashina jumped up, still laughing. She calmed down and turned to a Hanada who was making some tea in a campfire. Hanada, still salty from the genjutsu, didn't even give her a glance. Oh, don't be so mad. I had to do it. Your face was worth it, and besides, it got rid of your stutter. Kashina said as she dusted herself off. Hanada just got up and fixed her jacket. She huffed, and walked past the older woman. Kashina sighed. She couldn't have one of Naruto's key members mad at her. I guess that means the end of today's training. Kashina smirked. Hanada froze. What at? Try ain and ing. Hanada asked, stunned. I mean I can't terrorize my newest student that much yet, can I? And besides, I know there's a hidden lioness hidden behind that tacky jacket. Kashina said as she walked up to the blue net. Why do I feel like that's an insult, rather than a compliment? Hanada thought as she ran to catch up to the two piece wearing women. Oh and don't think I didn't hear that stutter, Kashina said, as they continued their path. Scene 3. It was three weeks later, 
just a few hours before they entered the sand village. Kashina and Hanada was fighting some leaf ninja. Genjutsu. Fire dragon roar, Hanada yelled, as a fire dragon appeared in her place. It roared and let a beam of fire fium at mouth. It hit ninja one, and incinerated him. Ah he was key and acute, Hanada said, as her opponent was crisper and blown away. Ninja one, you'll pay for this demon slut, Ninja two said as he prepared a lightning jutsu. Lighting style. Lightning prison. Ninja two sent out a lightning bolt that quickly made a cage around Hanada. Lightning crush, Ninja 2 waited for the smoke to clear, before he saw Hanada laying down. He laughed. Ha, you're not so tough now are you? Since you can't fight anymore, I guess I can turn you into my slut. He advanced forward, he reached to grab her let, but feel to his death onto spikes. He coughed up blood and screamed. What, a genjutsu? When, Hanada looked over the pit and smiled. I actually preformed two genjutsu. I casted them both on you, as soon as you started your prison just you. Thanks by the way for a new ninjutsu, by the way. As for what you said, well I got something just for you. Hanada smirked. Water style. Narrow needle barrage. Water came from the air, turned into skinny sun bonds, and flew into the hole. A few seconds later, a woman's high-pitched scream came from the hole. The ninja was a man though. Out outside the genjutsu. Hanada's sweat dropped. That was almost louder than Saku Ho's screech. Hanada shuddered at the thought. She turned around and saw Naruto. She ran up to him, and quickly noticed that he was holding his hands over his private. He was in his birthday suite too. A closer look, there was blood all over his private and Naruto looked worn out. Hanada, he coughed. They're all gone. Kiba, Shino, Kakashi. They captured Dad, Uruka, and Sasuke. He fell to the ground. Hanada ran towards Naruto in fright. Naruto raised his hand up to her face, and held it. It okay, I'll see you in a few hours. Don't forget the Uzumaki healing factor. He tried to laugh, but blood was sprayed all over Hanada's face. He passed out, and his hand moved from his crotch. Hanada looked down there, AMD say that his was gone. Like someone had ripped it off his body. She let out a loud ass scream. Her days of God worthy Ing was gone. She will no longer feel that, once divine rod anymore. She stayed there, over Naruto's body crying her heart out. Suddenly Naruto pushed Hanada out of the way, and took spear to the heart. Hanada broke her vocal cords at the sight. He was slumped over, and smiled at Hanada. I love you, his head crushed by a boulder. She ran over to him again, crying and removing the rocks. Once she removed the rocks she saw nothing. No head, no body. And here I thought that you can see through E rank jutsu by now. I guess I have to increase your training. Kashina sat behind Hanada, on her two enemies. That was too far, Kashina. Hanada yelled at the lady. A second later, Hanada cowered at the look her sensei gave her. She was the real demon of the leaf. Kashina's red hair stood up like Kurama's tails. Hanada felt more fear in her body more than the times where Sakura was useful. There was no time where that bitch was useful. It's sensei. And don't think I didn't hear that stutter. Kashina yelled as she approached the scared girl. Sensei. I am very sorry. I didn't mean that. I was just foolish. Please don't use the frying pan. Hanada begged with her soul. Oh I have to. Otherwise you won't learn your lesson. Kashina said as her famous frying pan appeared in her hand. No. Hanada screamed. Frying pan no jutsu. Kashina knocked Hanada all the way to the sand village. End. Hanada. Unfortunately I landed Lord Forth. That's all I'm gonna say for Lord Forth's sake. Interviewer. So Naruto did you have any problems? Naruto. Number. I did run into Haku, Zabuza, Tunzuna, and Inari. They was camping out in a cave I was running by. I helped them to their destination which was back to their home. I also ran into Tsunade and Suzum who fled the village and chose the land of the wave as their hiding place. Interviewer. So what happened when you and Hanada met? Minato. No authing. Let's not talk about it. Interviewer. So where are you now, and who is with you? Kashina. I'm currently heading towards the hidden mist with Minato and Hanada. Hanada. I'm with Lord Forth and Sensei, AMD we're headed towards the mist tomorrow. Minato. 
I'm with my loving wife holds up a sign that says, save me from this demon. And Hanada. Next is the mist. Kashina. I'm with my husband, and my student Hanada. They are gonna match with me towards the mist. Shino. I'm with Kiba, and we're gonna head towards the cloud village. Hopefully this idiot will not cause a scene. Kiba. I'm with Shino and we are staying in the cloud. Sasuke. I decided to stay in the stone village, and eat at the hotel. Kakashi. I am with Aruka and we're heading towards the land of the wave. Aruka. I am with Kakashi and I'm currently taying to find the pervert. So we can finally leave and head towards the wave. Interviewer. Anything else you wanted to say, before I go? Minato. Tell my son, be safe. Kashina. Tell my Gaki, not to eat any ramen without me. Hanada. Tell Naruto, I love him. Kiba. Tell Naruto, I want to as soon as we see each other. Shino. Tell Naruto, I'll stay safe. Sasuke. Tell him, he better explain himself. When I see him. Uruka. Tell him he better not die. Kakashi. Just to be carefully, and not to forget my yaoi yaoi, extreme hentai. Interviewer. Until next time I guess. Bye. I should stop here. Naruto said as he rested in an abandoned cottage in the forest, that's slightly between the border that heads into the direction of the sand village. It was now night time, but he could not sleep. Naruto, I know what you and your friends are doing is important, but do you know what tomorrow is the start of? Kurama asked her jailer. Naruto eyes widened, how could he forget such an important event of their contract and friendship? Are you talking about? Treat yourself weak. Naruto Khan Kurama chanted together. Naruto threw down his stuff down on the broken bed, and entered his mind. It was time for the TYW Eve dance and music party. Every year, around the week before Naruto's birthday week, Kurama and Naruto team up to dance, sing, eat, and visit merchant places to buy anything they want without caring about the price. Hence the name Treat Yourself. Naruto seemed to forget about his teammate, who looked at Naruto questionably, after seeing him lay on the bed. Mindscape dance time, Naruto appeared before Kurama in her girl form. You ready, ko? Kurama asked as she readied her phone. Bitch, I was ready yesterday. Naruko sassed. Kurama pressed play on body by Megan the Stallion. Real hot girl shit, ah, and if the beat live, you know Lil Ju made it. Let the chill of baga a a a a a a a a a i n. They both yelled, before they started dancing. Body Odi 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 Mwa Body Odi 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 Ah 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 Odi 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 Lights from a stage started to shine on Naruko as she began to movie her hips. Body crazy, curvy, wavy, big titties, lil, waist, yeah, yeah, yeah. Body crazy, curvy, wavy, big titties, lil waist moi naruko emphasized her body parts to the song while moving fluently to the music then the lights casted on both her and kurama body odi 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 the lights left naruto as kurama's slender form to front stage her tails shaking behind her perky butt look at how i body that ate it up and gave it back uh yeah you look good but they still want to know where megan at Naruko sung backstage singer, then resumed dancing. Where Megan at? Saucy like a barbecue but you won't get your baby back. See me in that dress and he feel like he almost tasted that ah, ah, ah. The song ended since it was time for Naruko and Kurama to appear into the real world. Real world. Naruto woke up and changed back into Naruko, as a red puff was revealing Kurama. Lur our week begin, Kurama shouted. Yeah we are gonna spend a lot of time at every village we come across. Naruko matched her enthusiasm. Let's head to Suna, Biach. Kurama playful shouted, and strutted towards Sunagakur. Bitch, wait up, we gotta go in Uzumaki style. Naruko's playful banter and swayed her hips told Kurama they were gonna cause so old fashioned, relationship destroying, women hating fun. Time skip brought to you by Obsidian. Obsidian it's a gem, it's a stone. It's one of your favorite authors. The sky was cloudy, and the air was so moist. The residents wondered if they was going to receive water today,
for it hasn't been rain in months. Suddenly a beam of light bursted through the clouds above the case cages building. Two people know two goddesses floated down, with their arms open. Birds flew around them, and latched onto their outfits to help them descend. Shinobi quickly surrounded the duo, as they touched down onto of the roof. The first goddess had golden hair, which flowed through the wind like she was in the movie Pocahontas. Her counterpart had her stunning red hair tied in a bun on top, with two bangs down by her Angelina Jolie in Maleficent cheeks. Naruko, insert picture from profile, Kurama, insert picture from profile. Both of their eyes were closed, until the golden-haired beauty opened her crystal blue gem stone eyes. The red head followed, revealing her bloody red eyes that can stop a demon of the highest order in its tracks. Oh, the angelic voice started with vocals. When a difficult day goes by, she continued. Keeping it together is hard, but that's why, the angel cleared the sky. You've got to try, you've got to try, the sinful voice of her companion cut in. It's the true, it's the true, it's the true kind of love, they harmonized together perfectly. The everyone was left defenseless, even the Anbu of Suna. They walked by each and every one of one the ninja, and said, take a picture, it will last longer. Everyone snapped out of their of their gaze. Kurama and Naruko began to laugh, sounding like the most precious met the most sinful thing on earth and no one could prevent their fry nine endship. That's how you make an entrance. Kurama rolled her eyes in false annoyance. Now let's get some food, champagne, and clothes. After we'll look for my dad. Naruko walked away with Kurama, leaving the ninjas dumbfounded. Another time skip brought to you by kinks. Whether you like your or you don't. Everyone got a kink. Minato and Kashina was currently eating in a high-priced restaurant with Kurama and Naruko. They was catching up, when they heard explosions. They sealed their food away, before they ran out to see Gara fighting Daidara and Sasori. Oh hell no, we're not fighting in these fly-ass dresses, Naruko said, and just before a bomb missed Gara, and but a building causing rubble to hit Naruko's dress. Kashina and Minato quickly hid behind Kurama. Ah. Uh, why the heel y'all hiding behind me? Kurama asked defensively. You're the most powerful tailed beast. You can withstand huge amounts of damage. Kashina said. Yeah, also if you do, die, you'll just reform inside of Naruko. Minato added, as he hid behind his wife. So what happens if her attack bypasses me, hmm? Then obviously Kush Chan gets hit next, cause you're behind her. Kurama threw this little info out. Kashina glared at Minato. Kurama laughed wickedly as Kashina pounded Minato into the dirt. Kurama discreetly left town, and waited 50 miles away just in case. As this went on, Naruko entered into a form that even the dumbest and bravest men would never try to fight. The all-fearing, and dubbed, furious demonic female mode. Aka the angry mother mode to the husbands. Naruko didn't have to do anything. Nothing at all. All the fighting instantly stopped. Every sleeping Nara woke up. All the Akamaiki members stopped eating. Heal, even the Shinigami stopped collecting souls. Naruko cleared her throat once before she spoke in an too calm voice. Who threw the clay bomb? What happened next, had its own history book by itself because future historian couldn't even sum up what happened into a, a single chapter lesson. All the civilians and ninja ran over each other trying to evacuate. The hospital got up and ran away. Every tailed beast screamed in horror and shrunk down into a fly to try to hide. Kagaya didn't even want to be released anymore. Sasori tried to bribe Nagato to reverse summon the red haired puppet, but Nagato had said that. And had to relocate the entire Akatsuki base. Orochimaru and Kabato stopped their ing to move bases. Even Gara tried to teleport away, only to be clotheslined by a fist. Poor, poor Dadera, even as I write this, I pity his soul. Cocking said three words, just three words that cursed his soul that even the Shinigami couldn't reap his soul. The one word in particular was the baddest word. Way worse than the word bitch could ever be to Naruko. This special man no soul said, I did cunt. And with a smirk too. The next thing that happened was total carnage. It was so destructive that every kami in every multiverse used up over half of their power to erase and restore that poor village. Naruko, with a single shift of her nail. Mind you that her mind went total blank and she was unconscious, 
let out her soul-powered blast that made a Tsunade in her prime angered punch seem like she just smashed a grain of sand into dust. This obliterated Daidara's whole everything into nothing. All that was left was his arms, but why would be revealed later. Gara received the less of it, because he wasn't really the problem. All Gara got was punched all through time and back again, leaving him scared for months. Sasori was no more, he was soul was erased from existence. Wait who was I talking about again? Oh yeah the village, Sunagakar was turned into a crater that reached halfway into the mantle. And all Naruko had to do was release her hand. Her parents, friends, lovers agreed to never mess up Naruko dress while she's on her period. Time skipped past village recovery. It has been weeks since Suna's occurrence and a few thing happened. 1. Gara became Naruto's bitch boy. After all Naruko was still on her period when Gara came to and he didn't want to be punished again. 2. Naruto restored Sasori to his full human side, and made him into an all-in-one sex toy. Explanations later. And 3. Sons paid Naruko to never enter the village as an enemy, for a fee of 1000 million USD. Every month, and additional 500 million to occasionally teach each genin crop of their village every 6 months. Everything was pretty normal. Except it was time to move on to the Taki village. This time with Tsunade teaching Naruko some medical jutsu, Suzun holding Tom Tom, and Naruko's parents and Jail Berg, back into her mind. Time skip. Light style. Shooting star. Naruto formed a ball of light, that resembled a star, in his hand and threw it at a hunter nin. The attack hit the Konoha ninja, and caused a huge explosion that took out another hunter ninja. His other teammates survived by dodging or replacing themselves with other objects. Naruto went to collect some herbs he saw on the path to the hidden waterfall village for some herbal tea, but ran into a platoon of hunter ninjas. Naruto huffed as he dodged sword attacks. He kicked another hunter nin, caving in his ribcage, and smashed two other skulls into each other. Naruto took out two identical fighting rings, and charged at his enemies. Light Style Solar Flare Naruto jumped into the air, gathering red hot sun energy, before slamming it into another hunter. This blew back another three as they was charging. Naruto sealed his weapons before he unsealed a blue parasol. Light water combo. Pure geyser. Naruto called out as he opened the parasol to the sky. The ground under the ninjas glowed blue, before the water erupted a shower of high speed water under them. This beam reached the sky, and either skinned, killed, or knocked over half of them away. That actually took a lot, Naruto thought, he was just now reaching 80% energy after fighting for 4 hours straight. Luckily there was only 5 hunters left. Genjutsu. Hell Village Jutsu. One called out, Naruto changed weapons again, this time a bow. Naruto charged it with light energy, and pulled the string back. The chakra gathered in the form of an arrow before he released it at the sky. Light style. Full barrage. Naruto released the arrow, which spilled into multiple arrows and struck the area in front of him. This worked perfectly, because the enemies jumped back, thinking the angle would have made the arrows hit where they was. Instead, it stuck them down like pig in a slaughterhouse. Now I really need that tea, Naruto said as he collected the basket by a tree. Kashina and Minato was cheering, and Kurama was sleeping, but muttered, that's my kit, softy. MMHNHN, MMMHNHNHNHNHN, Dabba da Dabba Dukan Pa Pa Pa. I hummed as we walked towards the hidden mist village. I was looking through my memories, to see if there's anything I've learned about the mist, and I found a locked door with a, do not enter, door on it. So I followed the rules. Fiend, I didn't follow the rules. I opened the damn door. When I did open the door, my mother father, and Karama shouted at me not to but it opened anyways, what shocked me, was that I had this memory at all, it was so shocking no sickening no horrible, I can remember it all now and I still wanna throw up, flashback, I was walking through the Hokage building on my way to see him about some new prank I did, I heard moaning coming from his room, so I sneak in the room, to catch the people in the act, and tell Sarutobi about it, I transformed into a fly, and entered the room quietly, and hid beside the bookshelves, I transformed back, but froze in terror. On the desk was Sometging more disturbing than seeing your parents on the kitchen table. On the Hokage's desk was Danzo, 
gets spread wide by Sarutobi. There was so many wrinkles, and moles that I wished I never seen. I almost threw up, the angle I was sighting at, had the worst view too. So I could see their saggy balls clapping, and Sarutobi thrusting into the old war hawk. I couldn't move at all. I was petrified, horrified. In me Saru baby, fill me up with your daddy. Danzo moaned and sat up on Sarutobi's lap. My eyes be was dinner plates. Yeah, you want it. You want daddies. Sarutobi thrusted up. I could hear every wet squishy noise. Yeah, 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 on me. Use me as your napkin. Danzo tongue bung out his mouth. Oh yeah, here I come, here. U G G G G H H H H. Saruto pulled Dan's off him and started stroking his soggy hard. Danzo was on his knees with his tongue out. Saruto let out his uncovered Danzo's face. They both moaned. Sarutobi pulled Danzo up and started kissing him softly. All right, I am done, is what my stomach said. I threw up everything I ever said, ate, and inhaled. Naruto brat, how much did you see? They both yelled. Enough to know I am upgrading my shit. I am coming back later I cleanse my mind of this shit. I want ten of everything in the best ninja shop in the village. If not, everyone will receive multiple picture of you to banging. Even the other leaders in the land of fire. You got one hour. I didn't even bother to wipe my face. I left. True to my words I got my weapons. But didn't remember why. Flash back end. What the? I screamed. My body was shaking like the wind. We told you not to go in there. Minato said. Obviously so. Are all the doors like this? I asked. Well, wait. Why can you all? I began to ask, but I was woke up. That was close. Kashina said, as she looked at Minato. Too close. Minato swiped his hand through his hair. QB you're doing your job sloppy. Straighten up, or else. You know what will happen to you and you kit. If you keep struggling, Kashina threatened the giant fox. In the dark, a loud growl was heard. Piercing red eyes was furious. Minato turned to Kurama in the cage. Let's hope we can undo this sudden curiosity our dear child has. Minato channeled chakra into his hands. Let's do it dear. So why have you appeared before me, Serutobi? A dark figure spat. I know you are the survivor or a certain clan. So if you want to really finish what the Uzumaki started, then hear me out. Serutobi glared, his only hand on his Hokage hat. I wiped them out. How could another pop up? You must be senile and crippled. The dark figure chuckled. The old Hokage glared. He threw the figure a bloody cloth. The figure sniffed the fabric. Ah, so you're being truthful. Okay, I am in. The female stood up. Let's destroy that clan, before they do. She lotted mischievously into the night. So mom, can you tell me about the day Kurama attacked the village? I asked, as I stroked the kindles in the campfire. Okay Naru-chan, well it all started like this, Kashina said. Flashback, where's my ing Cheetos? Minato, you ing c u u u u u u u u n t. A r r r r r r r r r r r g. Don't think that I won't destroy everything to find your Cheeto stealing ass, you bitch. What the you ninja w a a a a a a n t. Move away o r suffer you hairless Gokus. The QB yelled as her tails flared around wildly. So you basically destroyed the village because someone atoli your chips. Not really. She was just on my period and shish. Let me finish the story. Okay jeesh. Anyways. People was running around crazy. AMD trying to prevent Kurama from destroying the village. While your father was fighting a masked nin. So while I was in pain. And protecting you. He gathered what he need for the seal. All the while. All I could hear was the QB screaming sentences like. When I find you. You blonde bitch boy. I will rip off your face you with my tails, and ass you with your. And, may Kami Yami, Shinigami, and Forever Obsidian have mercy on your soul, because I will not. I will rip your soul out your body, while pounding your into paste. She was not having it. So she finally calmed down when I gave her a bag of Cheetos, and I restrained with my chains. Your father showed up and sealed her. I died from chakra drain and poisoned chakra. Your father died while sealing our souls inside you. Flashback over, well you left out a lot of details, but at least I know about what happened. 
and with enough time to collect my lovers, and get the hell out of Dodge. Naruto chuckled. Yep, I am surprised how quick we found everyone. Minato said. At least we are almost home. Kashina chirped. We are here, Naruto said. The entire group landed in Uzugakur gates. Welcome home, family. Naruto smiled at his lovers. So explore the island, while I get what to look at the compound. Naruto left them behind. He stopped in the house, and went upstairs. Kush and I have to go prepare some things, we'll be back. Minato suddenly chimed. Okay, be safe, Naruto said, as they disappeared. Kit, I'm horny, Kurama perked. Okay, okay jeesh, I feel the same, let's. Naruto summoned the human version of Kurama. Let's get wild, Kurama slid to his knees. Naruto expand his cock, giving a few strokes he added a few drops of pre onto Kurama's face. Kurama tongue lapped at his piss slit. This tea feels so good. Naruto couldn't rock his hips fast enough. Can I have more? Of course, Kurama went back to the if front of him, and took it to the hilt. Naruto got louder, and as Kurama deep-throated, he got hotter. His cheeks turned red in a blush. You were really cute when you blush Naru. Kurama you shouldn't tease your master. I mean it, Naru-kun you are very cute. Naruto's heart fluttered. You're sexy too, my fox bitch. His cock was throbbing in Kurama's hand. He couldn't take it, his fat 14-incher was pushing at the nine tails lips. The tip rubbing, and rubbing, and rubbing. It was maddening. The same could be said about Kurama. The fundoshi he was wearing was soaked with pre, tented by his fat cock. Still too hot, he removed his fundoshi. With a sigh his hard cock snapped up. That's better. One hand wrapped around his cock he began stroking himself, the other played with his heavy balls. Here it is, Kura. Feast on my. The blonde came back. Naruto. The redhead gasped. Naruto eyed his prisoner. The man was very fit, hard well honed body, plump ass in back with a nice cock, big balls and a sexy nest of brown pubes crowning his crotch, in the front. Something wrong. Kurama gaze fell to the bulge in his face. Pleasure. Pure raw, hot, stretching pleasure. Kurama was purring happily, as Pre filled his mouth. Naruto moaned, his penis throbbing in the wetness of his mouth. He pulled at Kurama's hair tie and let the strands fall. Despite the stimulus to Naruto, it was in fact Kurama that came first. Perhaps it was the way the blonde's long cock tasted, or the way it roamed over his tongue and filled his throat, or perhaps it was the constantly increasing pace of fapping the Kyuubi was stroking at. Kurama spills all over the floor. Naruto follows suit, and s from his cock and tail. Fox moans as he's filled by his master, his belly and ass yet to be pumped full of jizz. Naruto pulled his cock out and Kurama groaned. Naruto, more please. He rolled over and stuck his ass in the air. His hands reached back and spreads his cheeks. Giving the blonde a full view of his gaping filled hole. Please I need you. Do you want it? Naruto moaned. Yes. Please, breed me make me yours. Naruto slides his between the nine tails ass cheeks. Silly fox, you already was going to be mine, he lines his cock up and pushes in. Kurama howls in pleasure, Naruto's thick cock felt amazing in his ass. The friction was perfect, fullness divine, warmth satisfactory. The demon braced himself and Naruto went to town, ing his prisoner into a lust-filled haze. Kura you smell so good. The tailed beast moans, bucking back to impale himself on Naruto's rod. The room was filled with the sounds of skin striking skin, Naruto's grunts, and Kurama's moans. His moans silenced soon enough as Naruto's clone was offered to Uruka. The red head didn't hesitate he wrapped his lips around the head and sucked on it hungrily. Naruto's hands came around and began toying with the man's perky nipples, he didn't need to touch his cock. Each pinch to the perky nub sent jolts straight down to his rod. What's more, Kurama's sweet spot was being pummeled by his new master's cock. Each hit, made the man's inner walls tighten around his thrusting cock. So tight, Naruto purred. The demon moaned around his cock. The man was not a quick shot by far, but he couldn't help ming all over Naruto's floor again. His ass clamping down on Naruto's cock. QB you are such a naughty boy. Proving his stamina and power and securing his place as Alpha Naruto brought Kurana to three more orgasms before climaxing himself. He filled the man with plenty of pre, 
so much his hole was making sexy squishing noises. He was practically drunk with pre from the tail. Naruto squeezed Kurama butt cheeks and came hard. Two sets of streams filled the man. The mess was cleaned up, and the blonde tucked him into bed. He ate two bowls of ramen himself, and he joined Kurama in bed, the two cuddled in orgasmic slumber. So it seems my power can be extended further. Maybe I can truly help my true jailer, like father originally wanted. Only time will tell, hopefully before it's too late. The QB channeled chakra into a compressed ball, and sent it into a spirit blade. Then he rested. The moon skated across the sky, and illuminated the two in the bed. The Naruto slept peacefully, not knowing what lies ahead, or what truly is happening. Only that he's satisfied now. It was all peaceful. Kurama and I had just finished having sex. My plans was finally flourishing. Or so I thought. Everything happened so fast. First there was a huge ass explosion. I jumped up to gather my clothes, but I was hit by a jutsu. Next thing I know, I'm surrounded by my parents. Mom. Dad. What's going on? I asked, as I struggled to get up. Oh nothing Naruto, just a sacrificing your body. Minato glared at me. Wh what? I backed up. Oh, and thank you for the all the gifts you've used. We'll take them now. After Kashina said that, my body started to glow. I quickly ran out the room, and down the courier. I heard fighting nearby, and ran towards it. I arrived to see Choji get a sword through his heart, as he pushed Hanat out of the way. I flashed through some hand signs. Cosmic style. Shooting star. Nothing happened. Then I realized what that glowing meant. I tried to foresee what would happen, but that didn't work either. So I tried a jutsu that couldn't be taken away from me. Surprise fart no jutsu. I jumped at the Minato clone and farted into his face. He dropped his sword and started gagging. He dry heaved, and started crying. Ha, you might have stolen my bloodlines, but you can't steal non-bloodline related abilities. Also FYI, I had red beam and chili nachos from Chipotle last night. Good luck surviving your burning throat sensation. Asshole. I gave him the middle fingers and took Hanada away. Naruto-kun, why are they attacking us? Hanada asked, her eyes tearing up. They used me as if I was a condom. They are now Uzu's enemies. Now we just need to rally our troops, and take them down. They stole my bloodline, so use non-bloodline related jutsu on them. I made a windblade and decapitated a Kashina clone. Hi. Naruto-kun, Hinta made a gentle plam strike strike for the heart of the double Minato clones. Silly Naruto Sochi, we are your parents. The clones of Kashina AMD Minato jumped into a clearing across from us. We stopped on the other side. Then a ruffled Shino and a breathless Kiba appeared next to us. Naruto-sama, I am glad you're okay. Shino said as he threw me two katana blades. Yeah, I don't really understand what's going on but I'm not going down without giving that bitch all I got. She killed Akamaru, Kiba growled. Hanada and Kiba, Vanguard. Shino, Rearguard, it'll be center guard, Y formation, go, we mustn't lose. For our children, for our lovers, for Uzu. I roared, I received a chorus of yes. Kashina and Minato looked amused. Silly son, we've got decades of experience, and you, none. So just surrender to your fate. Minato said. Come on, it'll hang you real slowly. Kashina bent down seductively, and summoned her whip. No matter what, I won't lose to you. I fired back, we all disappeared. I clash blades with Minato. Dust blew away. Heavenly double destruction. Fang spining blade. Kiba and Hinata attacked from the side. Hinata aimed two strikes for Minato's lungs, and Kiba for his neck. Minato kicked me away, but I slapped his foot away. Minato dodged Kiba's attack AMD and grabbed Hinata's plam, before flinging her into Kiba. Kashina swung her whip towards my sword, but I narrowly avoided it, and threw ten kanais at her. Multi-shadow elemental kanai no jutsu. Those ten kanais became one thousand kanais of all kinds. Uzumaki style. Spinning reverse counter. Kashina spun her whip AMD made a shield using her speed, that made the kanais fly back towards me. Replacement Jutsu. I changed places with Minato, who almost stabbed Kiba in the neck. Minato already had gotten a gentle fist strike to the arm, so he didn't have time to fully defend himself. 
Monado number, Kashina yelled. The kanais rained down like stones from the sky. Monado tried his best with his sword, but still took three four of the total damage. Let's stop playing around, Monado said. He staggered to stand up. Kashina jumped to his side, as Kurama appeared beside him as well. Shikamaru and Itachi jumped next to us. Shino, Shikamaru in the rearguard. Give support from the back. Itachi in the middle, defensive techniques to protect the rearguard and offensive to help the vanguard. Kiba, Hanada and I will be vanguard. I formation, it was a good thing I healed Itachi's illness, otherwise he'd be dead already. Kurama used his tailed beast state, and rushed at us. Kashina tried using the Uzumaki chains. Minato threw his special kanais all around us. Itachi put up his Suzano which Minato couldn't flash through. Kashina's chakra chains wrapped around the large giant, as Kurama fought it head on. I placed seals around the Suzano that absorbed outside chakra that hit it, and gave it back to the people inside of it. Kiba used a new technique, that we came up with to aim at Minato who kept trying TL break through the Suzano. And Hinata was using medical just you to heal Shino, Itachi, and Shikamaru. Inazuka style. Rapid fang shooter. Kiba used earth chakra to coat metal over his nails, and shoot his claw-like nails shaped metal nails at Minato. I ran through hand signs. Earth wind style. Comet's way home. I smashed the ground using my field medic strength, and used wind chakra to shoot the tiny jaggered rock pieces at Kashina and Minato. Chakra chains barrier. The rocks hit the wall and fell to the ground. Amaterasu. Itachi literally lit Kurama ass up with flames. Kurama fell back and started rolling on the ground. He accidentally rolled over Kashina causing her chakra chain barrier to collapse. Shadow style. Bondage. Shikamaru used his shadow to restrict Minato completely. Earth style. Earth tomb. Shino used a Gara imitation jutsu to trap Minato in a tomb. Then a huge burst of chakra. I looked around towards Kashina. She activated her tailed beast state, and dashed through our ranks, slashing at us all. That made Shino and Shikamaru break their jutsu, releasing Minato who went into his tailed beast state. It was at that moment the Suzano broke and Itachi kneeled next to Hinata and Kiba. We were totally surrounded. Give up, and die. I stood up, and reached into my soul. I gathered my soul chakra to release my soul blade. My team followed sweet. We released our Shikai state and entered our Bankai state. Growl Hanako. Double in weight. Reach up to touch the sky. Salsa and march. I inherited the earth. Gaia's love. Guardians of the twelve gates. Release the zodiac. Bound by the stars. Shadow silhouette. Pride of the Uchiha clan. External Mangekio Sharingan. Chosen by the gods. Titan slayers. Our weapons became our Amur and we raced towards the three tailed beasts. The earth shook, the heavens screamed, and hell cried. It was worse than even World War II. We were riping apart our very fabric of our beings. I punched towards Kurama, who kicked Kiba, who also tapped Kashina on her forehead. She kicked Hanada into Shino, who were sending demonic bugs at Minato. Who tried to crush Itachi's cranium, who used his black flames against Kurama. Suddenly I was slammed into the ground, and kicked Metters away. Hanada was clawed in the face, and had both legs broken. Itachi was luckily to teleport away from a raging Minato, who turned Shino into human mashed potatoes flakes that was wet. Only it was his bugs. Shikamaru was slammed by Kurama's tail into a tree that fell on top of him. Itachi grabbed Hanada and teleported next to me. Shino apparently had help from Kiba, who retrieved and knocked out Shikamaru. Minato, Kurama, and Kashina joined together to make a buju bomb the size of the moon. We all held each other closer. Then I had an idea. I quickly drew a seal, and sealed my surprised team into it. I then summoned a fox, who I told to take that back to Kitsune Forest. I looked back at the descending bomb with a smile. You, Minato, Kashina. I have no regrets, I hope to catch you both in hell. I gave them both middle fingers, and raced towards them. I had two last techniques I can use, that they didn't know I could use. Multi chakra rope jutsu, I yelled, as I made ropes with my chakra to wrap around the huge ass bomb, those three, and draw them towards me. I made more hand signs, as the bomb hit us. Kinjutsu. Revenge counter. 
All my battle damage went into the three, as I teleported away to one of my special kanais. Then the bad part of this just you happened. I screamed out in pain, as I felt my chakra paths burn as if they are on fire. I couldn't even use jutsu for at least five hours. Yu Ying brat, Kashina stood up weakly. She gathered a lot of chakra. My eyes widened. How the hell did she survive that? She then began to laughing hysterically. I'ma enjoy this. Uzumaki style. Raging AHCK. She couldn't finish her jutsu because an old dude appeared and decapitated her. Her body turned completely black, and red like energy dispersed from her stomach. Damn a Uzu clone. The white haired, Spartan looking dude turned towards me with his blade drawn. I stood up weakly my aching chakra coils and muscles protesting. I had just a special kanai left in my pouch. I thank you for your help, but why are you targeting me now? I wheezed out, and spat some blood on the ground. There's a reason why the Uzumaki and Uzu fell in the third ninja war. He walked towards me, and I kept walking backwards. I narrowed my eyes. A. Only an Uzumaki can disable the protection seals. B. There was a traitor in the leaf. C. The rivals of the Uzumakis participated in the war. And D, four nations banded together with over 25,000 soldiers. That battle lasted a week, and only one genin was able to make it out alive as one Uzumaki a medical Uzumaki healed themselves barely. The genin belonged to the only rival left of the rival clan. The Ochitsut, or the Kam clan. Kinda ironic. Over 200 civilian Uzumaki and one medic Uzumaki, the Whirlpool clan survived and only one clan member from Kam survived that whole battle. The clan of peace is what started the war. Fate's funny huh? By now, he had my neck against the tree with his sword pressed against it. I stared at his eyes, accepting death. He chuckled and sheathed his sword. Anyways I was just repaying an old debt from an old biiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiii
This happened for over three hours. Third Pav. As Uzu slowly rebuilt over the course of a month, Naruto took charge. Within the next few weeks, many bodies were found and sealed for those who were alive. Of my many lovers, only a few remained. Itachi, Hanada, Shikamaru, Hiba, Shino, and Kurama. I had to do a mass ritual because over one-third of my previous village population, and lost three-sevenths of my ninjas including my dead lovers. We burned the bodies in a huge bonfire, with a huge metal pan under it. Lucky we had advanced earth users still. We then had the ash of our fallen separated into huge vases and scattered in the ocean with my ninjas using water walking. This day will forever be called, the new path. Meaning that instead of Uzu being destroyed again, it managed to survive. Thus breaking the cycle, we actually made it a new tradition with a week-long festival celebrating life and death that we call, the Ouroboros. The snake Orochumaru eating its own, and the perpetually change form in an eternal cycle of destruction and recreation. Besides the festival, only 25% of the village was usable and I damaged. Minato and Kashina, who was corrupted by Orochimaru's seal, was returned to the afterlife. Guide was nowhere to be found, but I could search for him later. Currently I'm sitting at the beach looking into the ocean, watching the waves, that had been clashing viciously, now calm and elated. A crab shuffled down the beach, and a seagull flew across the sky. It was the only thing peaceful. Not even three days after the new path, word of the organization the Red Dawn had started coming after the tailed beasts. Apparently they are composed of S-rankers, so the five, now six, major villages are thrown in a hoot. The tree huggers, aka, the hidden leaf, are not as strong anymore because their third Hokage couldn't take the seal off, and elected Tsunade Senju as their possible fifth Hokage, the top two head team members had left the village, several of their top clan heads heirs left, a lot of their Anbuin close to being S-class ninjas in their ranks are either injured or dead, and Kakashi had left to seek me out. Not to mention their tailed beast had left. The bloody mist just recovered from their civil war, and now their new Mizukajime is leading the village. So they are focusing on healing, training, and patching up their internal drama. Rumors has it that their five tails had escaped the previous Mizukage and fled. Not to mention the elusive remaining tailed beast holder. The sand dwellers lost a huge powerful figure, their cage. It had been during the Chunin exams. So now they are pushing for their demon holder Gara to become their new cage. Talk about double irony, because of the way they treated him and because he had contacted me about relocating to Uzu. The rock polishers, Iwa, can't seem to completely control their tailed beast's holders. One is missing, and the other an angry monkey who hates humans. They also have the fence sitter himself who could croak at any time. The thunder tribe themselves, the hidden cloud, was the best over the six villages. They have the first perfect tailed beast, and currently have their second tailed beast in training. Although they are claimed to be majorly arrogant, they live in the most secluded place on top of a mountain. A strength and a weakness. But they had the most issues with getting resources. Although the hidden waterfall village isn't part of the big five, read six, they have the seven tails. Still, they lack sufficient manpower. Even with the not so hidden knowledge of the hero's water. Plus, rumors have it that their leader is spineless. Then we have the hidden eddy, Uzu. We lost a lot of our ninjas. We still have 15 S class rankers, we have 10 A class ninjas. 45 B-class ninjas, 130 C-class or less ninjas, and a huge powerful barrier seal. On top of the seal, we have the strongest tailed beast, Kurama, the natural whirlpools that protects against people to travel by boats, now we have hurricanes that protects us too, along with our own resources. Although saying this, we are isolated, still rebuilding, and still on the rising as we sort out our official ranks again. Overall I think out of the villages, I think that the Cloud and Uzu will be the last ninja villages to fall. The Samurai will give the Red Dawn hell too, so will the monks. Speaking of which, the monks and Samurai are said that they will ally with the five major villages. If the villages can get their shit together, and actually become one power. Besides that, I have been feeling a little off ever since the new path. I feel like pieces of me are gone. Not in the sense of I've lost loved ones, although I still grieving them, but as in I'm not complete. Like a missing puzzle piece, or an incomplete painting. 
I sighed as I watch a couple of pelicans bully a crab on the beach. I turned my head to the footsteps approaching. So this is where you've been Uzukage sama Haku I told you that you didn't have to call me that. I smiled at him. I know Koi, but I love teasing you. Haku smiled. I rolled my eyes and smiled back. The sea foam was misting the beach now, and the saltiness of the air was nice. You hear anything else from the plant? I asked. By plant I meant Zetsu. He had already gave Uzu the intel on each member and their jutsu, so I'm currently training my ninjas what to do in those situations. But training hasn't been productive because of the rebuilding and the festival. The only reason why we would win is because of the intel we got from Zetsu, even then it will still be a slaughter on our side. He just came by with the plans. The plans are in your office at the moment, but please just take a nap Koi. You've been up three nights in a row. Haku hugged me with one arm and leaned against me. Fine, but you, Ino, and Hinata have to come with me. I want to be smothered by breasts tonight. I kissed Haku, she just chuckled and pulled me into a standing position. Let's go lover boy, Haku laughed. It lover man, I smacked Haku on his ass and smiled. Maybe we will be okay. Third pav, location, so you are the mysterious person who stopped my clones. Foolish really. A long-haired male sat on a throne, hidden by the lack of light in the cave. You really think you are invincible? The bladed figure standing in front of him sneered. Invincible? Not yet. Uncatchable? Yes. Conniving? Yes. The person replied cockily. You forgot wretched and sick-minded. The figure said. Watch what you say to the master fool. The head henchman snarled. The man didn't even flinch. It's okay. He was just offering to become my pet is all. The leader licked his lips. Fat chance in hell you creep. But now there's nothing you can do. I'm gonna escape. Then smiled tauntingly. Guards, get him. Location. So it's decided that we will take a two year break to find new members, stock up on more supplies, and train. A clocked man said to the holograms. Does this mean that we can finally pursue our love for art? A blonde said. No. No unnecessary destruction. No unnecessary lazing around. Also no fighting enemies unnecessarily. Get to work on eliminating your weaknesses, and stay in the hideouts. We will conjoin again next month. The only female said. Many members groaned. Does that mean I get that match, Itachi? The only shark member asked his partner. No I will go retrieve some important scrolls from my clan, and study those. Itachi replied back dryly. Boo you're no fun, the shark man teased, you all are dismissed, the leader said irritated. Third pav, Uzubikur Uzukage's office morning, so any eyes on that bastard? Kiba asked Shino, the big boy shifted his glasses before replying. Yes, he is currently searching for Itachi-san, he is in Suna right now. Well tell Gara to keep an eye on him before he leaves. Also tell him the rendezvous point, Naruto told Shino. As he looked over some papers, Shino shook his head and left. Kiba, take Haku, Zabuza, and two others of your choice and go recruit some new members of the village. We need at least 15 new construction workers, 12 tailors, 8 farmers and 16 people to work our orphanage. Naruto told the ex-dog Nin. Kiba kissed Naruto on the lips and left. Naruto sighed and rubbed his head. He looked out in the ocean from his window. So Q. How the plan's going? He asked his fuzzy friend. It's going good Naru-kun. We should have the new jutsu down. As for the Edo, well with the mask it's easy to fully revive dead souls, but we still need to improve on the technique. Q reported as she laid down. That's good. BC Choji, Akamaru, and Anko was a just a few major losses for that day. Plus Kiba been heartbroken, and that kills me more than this paperwork does. Naruto sulked. I know I know, but hey, at least the village is doing better. The kids are acting like kids again. Q said. Yeah that's nice, Uzukage. A ninja busted through the door in a hurry. Naruto sighed heavily. Yes Senji. Naruto asked the nin. This just came in. It's a notice from the cage summit. This also came in the mail. Then nin handed the two scrolls to the cage. Naruto opened the summit one first. Uzukage dono. We are having a cage summit in two weeks in the Land of Iron to discuss what to do about the Akatsuki. Signed Mifune. Naruto sighed heavily again, and opened the other scroll. 
Dear Kyubu Jinchuriki, this is Fu the Seven Tails Jinchuriki. I need your help to escape my village. I want to live on your island and be one of your ninja. Please help me I'm in trouble for even sending this to you. But I had to at least try otherwise I fear that they might even start beating me again. They might start beating me after this message is sent. Please hurry Uzukage sama Fu, shit, the end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.